Well, hey there. For Best Music Coach, my name is Dan, and you're watching a music teacher's reaction live and in real time to Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. I have never, ever, not once ever in my life, never, ever, ever heard this music before. So everything I do say, talk about, teach, break down, is all going to be off the top of my head in the moment as we go. So here we go. We're going to rock and roll. Some call me the Space Cowboy. Thank you very much. If any of you would like to donate to upvote your next <laughs> most organized dance stream ever, check. Uh, thank you all so much for coming to hang out. If you want to donate, you can go ahead and do that with bits. So if you want to donate a thousand bits, two thousand bits, three thousand, anything over a thousand, I'm gonna go ahead and count that to whatever OST you want me to. If you want to donate, there's also an option to go ahead in my tip jar in the about. Now, we're going to go ahead and get rocking and rolling with this Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. With no further ado, I think I've talked long enough. I think you agree. Let's get started with a grand tale of time and darkness. Ness, 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 ness. Ness. <laughs> Well, what an interesting introduction. I think as I often do when we're finding something new, I'm gonna go ahead and hold any comments till I hear a little bit more. That was definitely setting a scene. That was definitely setting a tone for things to come. Let's rock and roll and see where this whole thing goes. By the way, if you have questions as we're going through this, one of the advantages of being here live, you can go ahead and ask your question about the music. And there's a very high likelihood I'll be able to answer your question. If I can't, I'll get back to you. By a carrier pigeon. Or indeed, carrier tortoise. Or a carrier pigeon. Two, well, you probably need two or three carrier pigeons, really, to carry a car, carrier tortoise. Unless it was a very small tortoise. Could have been an African swallow. No, they're non-migratory.
Oh my, it's going by fast. Okay. Okay, so one one little thing to point out to you that's pretty interesting is how there's this baseline. The baseline is what is, at least to me, now it's been many moons since I have played a Pokemon game, but my goodness, I have put my hours in. And I will tell you that this feels Pokemon-ish. There's something about the, ooh, the sort of you know, militant marching of the drums. The horns triumphantly playing, the bass doing interesting bass lines. This feels like Pokemon to me. I could be totally wrong, but I don't think I am. I've spent, I mean, I don't even know. You don't keep track of hours when you're a kid. What do you call two years of your life spent playing Pokemon? Spend a bit of time with Pokemon. This feels like Pokemon. Now, right here, this is pretty cool. Right there, that's cool. Okay, now. Let's talk about what chords are actually happening there. Uh. No. No. Okay, so what's happening there is we have an F major, and the F's the lowest note. Then what's happening is we're walking down chromatically, going down four notes all in a row, and changing the chords on top of it to agree with each other following this pattern of four descending notes. So we start off with an F, then we go to a C in first inversion, so E is now the lowest note. Now C minor in first inversion, so E flat's low note. Now to a G major in second inversion, so D's the lowest note. So. And if we think about this as driving us towards G. So we're going to forget about all the rest of the context, and we're just going to think about this one chord progression, these four chords, as driving us to G. So F is going to be like 7, or indeed the 4 of 4, hmm, which feels a little funky, but let's keep rocking with this. Then we go to C. Now this is like the 4 of G. Then C minor, still 4 of G, now a minor plagal cadence bring us to G. Very, very interesting and absolutely loving this so far. And I'll be pulling out little bits of these. By the way, this is your first time joining me on one of these streams. Welcome. I see a lot of first time chatters. Exception, Travel Master. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, first time chatters. If this is your first time on a stream with me, I'm a music teacher and I've never heard this music before. And so I'm listening to it and then breaking it down in real time without any prior preparation or knowledge. So this is what we do. We're going to have some fun. Let's keep this thing going.
I feel like this is a loop. So let's actually go back and I'm gonna break down as we go. Whew, what's up in here? So we start off with C. Okay, so we have basically a one, four, five in C. So it's us if we have C. And then C with a B flat in the bass, which creates C7, which actually is going to lead us because that's the five of four. That's the five of the F. So whenever I say the five of something, you can think about it this way. A five to one is like a slide. You get on the top of the slide, what happens? You end up at the bottom of the slide. And so a lot of times in music, five to one in any context is like getting at the top of the slide and brings you right down to the bottom of the slide. So we can think about the top of the slide as being tension. Yo, oh my gosh, we're about to go down the big water slide. It's a lot of tension, it's a lot of excitement. You go down the water slide, and then you're back home, you're safe on the ground. So we think of fives to, fives to ones as being tension to resolution. And we're gonna hear a lot, if, if by what I've heard so far is anything to go by, we're gonna hear a lot of interesting five to ones. Now this particular five to one is called a secondary dominant. Now we're not gonna get into what that exactly is right now, but understand this, we start with C. So C feels like one. So in the basic musical alphabet, we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, unlike the English alphabet, we don't go to H, we go back to A. So we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Round and round and round and round and round we go. So we could say A is one, B is two, C is three, D is four, E is five, F is six, and G is seven. And here's the thing about music, we can actually shift where the one is. So we could say C is one, then D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, we repeat back to A, A is six, B is seven, and we're back to C, which is one. So in this case, C is one. So we have C, then we have what feels like the five of four, so the five is, uh, so the five of four, so the four is F, and the five of four is go F, G, A, B, C. So it's C, but it's acting different than it being the one. So it's serving a different function in this case. Then we go to the, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, four, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my gosh, I was talking so long, I forgot how it went. Right, okay. And then we go to the four in first inversion. So A is the lowest note. And then we basically go to five. So what's interesting, and I will talk about this a lot, and I'm gonna break this down for you now because I have a feeling based on the first three songs we've heard here, we're gonna encounter this a lot, so I want you to understand this for today is the idea of a descending bass line with chords that are changing above it. So if I were just to isolate the lowest notes that were played here, it would sound something like this. Again. More effects, more effects, more effects. Okay, and so we can think of that as underpinning, being the guide of everything that's happening above it. So then above it, we're adding chords. Chords is when we take a note. A note is like that, and if we do two notes at the same time, that's a chord. So we're taking chords and placing them above this bass melody, this bass line. It's like a melody that the bass plays. So we've actually heard this same idea of a bass melody, or what we would say is a bass line, or a bass movement, and then chords built on top of this bass movement. Okay, let's keep the saying rocking and rolling. Woo! Break things down as we go. Next up is...
Okay, well, that was a, a very, very beautiful piece of music, and sometimes when we, uh, when we go ahead and find something that I can figure out very easy, easily, I will go ahead and play over it and sort of improvise. So what I just did was not prepared ahead of time at all. I made it up as I went. Now, if any of you are musicians, you're like, yeah, yawn, boring, okay, but if you've never done music before, that might seem like a ridiculously impossible thing to do, and I'll tell you it's not. You need to understand how the music works okay so how does it fit well it fits well because I understand what's happening in the music and I'm using two skills I'm using the skill of music theory to understand what's happening and the second is ear training to understand actually what I'm hearing and then put that into the music theory to figure everything out okay with that being said let's go through and actually break down what's happening here It's basically two chords. It's a C major 7, so we can think of C as being 1 here. And then E minor, which is 3. And then it's just alternating back and forth, just 1 and 3, and it's chilling out here. Now why does this feel so chill? Well, one of the reasons is because both C major and E minor in the key of C major, excuse me, so C is 1. When C major is 1, E minor plays a very similar role to C major, and that is the role of being a tonic area chord. Tonic area feels like home. So I'll explain the three different areas to you. So there's tonic area. This is home. You are safe. Like in most video games, at least from this area, era, excuse me, that I can think of that act like this, thinking of, well, even going back to Link, of the Link to the Past on SNES, you start off safe at home. 
That's your tonic area. Then you venture out into the world. Right, and there's soldiers throwing things at you, and then they scuttle after you. Again, link to the past. I'm old school. Love me some SNES. This is your subdominant area. There's a little bit of danger, but, you know, you kind of have to really not be good at the game to perish at this point. But in all fairness, speaking for myself, perish plenty of times at that point. So subdominant is like a little bit of danger. Then we go to the dominant area. The dominant area is a boss fight. And so there's three areas in music. There's your safe at home. There's a little bit of tension. There's the boss fight, and a little bit of tension oftentimes leads to the boss fight, and then after the boss fight, what happens? You return home safe, and everyone's happily ever after. So those are the three areas in music. Number one, tonic area. Number two, subdominant area. Number three, the dominant area. And so why this song sounds and feels like home and feels so safe is because it's taking two chords that fit in that tonic area. It's two chords that... I'll, I'll behave and stay diatonic. This just feels safe. It feels like home. There you go. Okay. Let's get rocking and rolling and check out this next one, which is called On the Beach at Dusk. And by the way, I'll say it again. If you have questions about the music, please feel free to ask them in the chat. I love answering your questions and can actually we can find our way to more interesting topics of conversation sometimes because I'm answering a question. Okay, on the beach at dusk, let's do this. So another interesting song here where we have two chords going back and forth. And the two chords have again an interesting relationship. So these are not two tonic chords. No, indeed. We now have a tonic chord and a subdominant chord. And by having both the tonic and subdominant chords present, this creates a little bit more tension. And I'll actually show you how the subdominant chord increases the amount of tension and mystery to it. So in this case, we're in the key of B flat. You can just think of this as being B. So subdominant, we're going to go up to four. So B, C, D, E. It's going to be some kind of E. So we have B to E flat. 
And you can hear, this is what's happening. E flat. Now go on to E flat. You can hear the guitar fits with the music. Okay, type a one in the chat if you can hear how the guitar is fitting with the music. Type a one in the chat. It's gonna be right down here. You right here, here, here. I know how spatial awareness works. Okay, all right, great. You guys can hear how the guitar is fitting with the music. Okay, so we have a B flat to an E flat. So we have tonic to subdominant. Now what's interesting about the subdominant, it's actually a minor subdominant, which is interesting because this adds an extra layer of mystery. Indeed, we can think about this as being a minor six. Ooh, how mysterious is that? Oh, this just feels mysterious. Why does this feel mysterious? Well, it's the mysterious minor six chord. Whenever you hear this chord, it is sure to feel like something unknown is happening. So while in the game, we might still be here somewhere that is safe, this chord right here implies that we're not quite as safe as we were before. So if we were to do the same idea of one to three that we had in the previous song, this feels very safe. This is like, this is home, my goodness. But now we have the subdominant. Ooh, little bit of danger. Back. Ooh, just a little bit of intrigue. And back. Ah, oh, nice and mysterious back home. And so that relationship between a tonic area and a subdominant area chord creates a little bit more tension, a little bit more interest going on. Okay, let's check out this next one, which is called Beach Cave. up by like a half step. Oh, now you can hear how different the music is now. It's the already says first dungeon theme. This makes sense. Right, so you've been thrust into the thick of things. Nothing terrible is at stake here, but you guys can hear so clearly from the first five songs to hear how the feeling, the, I mean, the, the emotion that the music creates for you is so different. Like, Welcome to the World of Pokemon is like, like, there's nothing wrong. Now we go to Beach Cave. Starts off exciting, adventurous, but a little bit more tension. Now 
now here's what really starts moving. Right, and so it moves, so we have one to four, back to one, then one moves around a little bit, then we go to flat seven, and then go to, I mean, my goodness, at this point we're kind of really out of out of the world of F. Then like a flat three. To what I believe was then D flat and then to E. So the point I'm trying to make to you here is that we still have an element of safety. And the element of safety is shown by there being a repetitive tonic to subdominant movement. We have an F dominant chord here, which goes to a B flat. 7 chord. This is a 1 to 4 relationship. Again, it's tonic to subdominant. But then after this repeats, there's a little bit more danger that happens. Ooh. Oh. Really changing up and taking us outside of the musical comfort zone we've been into up to this point. So the music is mirroring the journey perfectly. All right, let's check out this next one. In the depths of the pit. Oh my goodness. So what's happening here is again two chords repeating back and forth essentially. I'm simplifying it down a little bit, but at the heart of it, that's what's going on here. And at the heart of it we have essentially an E minor 7 to a D minor. Now we can also think about this as being a G to a D minor. In fact, we're going to go back and re-listen so I can listen to what the lowest note is. Yeah, okay, so the bass is going E to D. Okay, so it's really, it's going to be an E minor 7 to a D minor, are the two chords. And these two chords, while they're not quite as homey homey as our two tonic area chords we had before, there still doesn't feel like there's danger. Like maybe this is a corridor that we're walking through where we can't be, you know, we can't run into any danger. Perhaps this is just a thing, a puzzle we're solving maybe. This doesn't feel very dangerous. It feels like we're, you know, we're not home. There's a little bit more intrigue and things happening than being at home. But this certainly feels safe because of these two types of chords that are being put together. ZM123 Bro says, I think this song probably serves to de-escalate the player after trekking through the entire dungeon, but they're still in an unfamiliar location, so it's peaceful, but still a little bit mysterious. Well, ZM123 Bro, I would say that we're all lining up. Yes, that sound, that tracks. Fantastic. Yeah, it plays at the end of dungeons. That makes sense. Yes. Okay, this next one is called Title Theme. Let's do this thing. Oh, whoa, 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 we gotta go back to that again. Okay, now, real quick, I just want to do this just to have some fun. Uh, 
Let's see if we can do this. Okay, so what's happening there is we're starting off on C. C feels like one. Now, not just staying on C, it goes C to B flat back to C. Now, what's interesting is C to B flat to C actually works as a kind of sub tonic to subdominant movement. Hear me out. If you're an experienced musician, you're like, yeah, that's not a thing, Dan. Hear me out because I've got an argument for you that you may find to be convincing. When we look at the blues, and we've actually heard quite a few things throughout this OST so far that have been influenced by the blues, such as having a dominant one to a dominant four back to a dominant one. So it's like, okay, let's say we're being influenced by the music genre called the blues. There's a thing in a 12-bar blues called a quick change, where you go one, four, one, one, four, four, one, one, five, four, one, five. Now, that quick change, there's a lot of interesting things you can do with that quick change that don't directly involve four that still get you that same effect. For example, if we're in the key of C, so we'll play like a blues like we're in the key of C, one. You can go one, you can go to the tritone substitution of four, back to one. Now, I have also had experience going one, flat seven, one, four. Yeah. Uh, you know, get, getting a little, uh, sorry, uh, no. Right, if we use the tritone substitution uh, starting on the first and fourth code of the turn around. Anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is that essentially at, at the way this starts, the B flat feels like subdominant. It serves a subdominant function. Then we go flat six, flat seven, back to one. And that is undeniably going to be a flat six, flat seven, one. Now this movement of flat six, flat seven, one, you hear this all the time. This is one of the most common chord progressions that exist in the world with one change. This one right here is major instead of minor. What's major? What's minor? Major means a happy sound. Minor means a sad sound. So oftentimes when you hear this chord progression, chord progression means a series of chords. You can hear flat six, flat seven, one minor. But no, here we hear flat six, flat seven, one major. Happy. Oh, happy occasion. So, that's all for the entire, in terms of the harmony, what happened in this title theme. We had one, flat seven, one, flat six, flat seven. Very cool. Let's keep this thing rock and rolling. Type a three in the chat. Show me some love. Type a three if you're having fun on this stream. Type a three. Type a number three. The Wiggly Tufts Guild. We represent the Wiggly Tufts Guild. The Wiggly Tufts Guild. The Wiggly Tufts Guild. Represent the Wiggly Tufts Guild. The Oh!
Okay, so let's understand what's happening in the harmony in this song right here. So here we go. It starts off with one. Now, one in this case is going to be E. Now, now we hear this. thing, uh, which actually we heard before, not two or three songs ago. We heard the same idea. And so we have maybe a connection. When we hear elements that are similar, sometimes it's a connection of a noun, a person, place, or thing. Sometimes it could also be a situation. But anyway, uh, here we go. So we have one. So it's up one seven. But this is just the intro. One to four, five, back to one, four, to five, 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 to four, to one, to two, to five, uh, to minor four, to one, to five, and five, to five. about the size of it. Now, what really makes this feel so... Oh... Hang on a second. One, two, three, four. I only see four threes. Come on, guys. Look. What do we need to do today to make this more fun? Seriously. If there's something we can do to make this more fun, like you guys want to see me like jump in an ice bath, I will jump in an ice bath. What do we got to do to make this more fun? You let me know. I'll make this more fun. I'm cool. I'm hip. <laughs> yes. Let's go, guys. Whatever I can do. Like, if you have ideas. Like, you want to see me balance my guitar on my teeth. I don't know how to do that. Let's do it. Let's have some fun. Let's learn about music and let's make it fun. Okay. Let's keep this going. With Guild, Ma oh, Gig M Guild Master Wiggly Tough. My goodness, say that ten times fast. Okay, so why does this feel so homey? Why does this feel so safe? Well, it's because we're just hanging out on tonic and dominant chords. We're hanging out on essentially a C, basically a C7, and then every once in a while, on a G.
That's the whole thing. So this feels very safe. Most likely, if it says Guildmaster, I'm assuming we just are meeting a Wigglytuff. And we're talking to the Wigglytuff. Or maybe, sometimes, sometimes in the Pokemon games, they give Pokemon names to people, just to confuse you. Anyway, let's check out Good Night. Ooh, interesting. Oh, it is actually Wiggly Tough? Well, that's cool. Man, those first two chords are only for a loop. Let's grab those. Oh, I don't know what's happening with my ears. Come on now. Let's talk about what happens up to there. We have one, which is B flat major seven. We would like an F minor seven. E flat major seven. Essentially a one in the first inversion. Four to four minor. And then right there, what's going on? Oh, and then it loses me. So there. So we start off in B flat. I know I just said it so a lot of times it kind of stops and started. Roll with me here. Sometimes it takes my ears a second to figure out what's going on. So we have B flat major seven. To F minor seven. That right there is very, very, very interesting. Uh, very rare to have a 1 to 5 movement, and the 5 is minor 7, and the 1 is major 7. That's really cool. Very interesting sound. That's one of the reasons it took me a minute to figure out. Like, I may have never heard that sound before in my life. Like, <laughs> it's a very, very interesting sound. So, And then it goes to 4, then to 1, and then... Four to minor four to now we're kind of changing keys here. We're, we're tonicizing. Yeah. Well, D 
D flat and G flat, really that's going to be one to four, not five to one, because if D flat, uh, and again, this is thinking diatonically, if D flat is one, therefore G flat major seven would be four. So one to four. Oh my goodness, guys! Is, is that what it is? Oh, then to A flat? Okay, so we have D flat, G major 7, A flat, there we go, F, that brings us back to D flat. Okay, so this is really cool. So we actually do go to D flat. So we have B flat uh, to F minor 7 to 4 to 3 to 4, 4 minor, which brought us back to 1. And then we go to D flat now, so one, four, five, in D flat, now switching five of the B flat. So that five of the B flat, that's like you're up at the top of the ladder, and that's gonna, excuse me, at the top of the slide, and that's gonna push us back to the beginning. Wow, listen to that one more time. And really, we think we have this going as leading us up uh, chromatically from A flat. So A flat, A, back to B flat. Oh, that's super cool. Cool. All right, let's check out this next one. Woo! That was a lot going on there. That was huge. Okay, let's keep this thing going. Oh, yeah. Remix that wiggly tough now. Thank you. 
Well, we got a little crazy on that crazy train with Wiggly Tough, but that's okay. It's all in a day's work for crazy train playing guitar teachers. Okay, well, music teacher, really. Let's get this thing going with Drenched Bluff. Which is when you've gone for a swim in the pool and then you play poker and you try and convince everyone you have a better car better hand than you do. Well, if you want to know why I had a look on my face, like I'd just eaten a bad pickle. I don't know if you've ever had a bad pickle. I went to a restaurant the other day, last weekend, my girlfriend's birthday. And they served pickled shiitake mushrooms. And when I tell you that was the worst pickle, anything, I've ever had in my life. The pickle was so confused. It didn't know if it wanted to be sweet or sour. I felt sorry for it, really. So if, if you're wondering why my face looks like, I bit into a very confusing pickle. No, no, a comment here, you don't even understand. It wasn't, that, it wasn't that I was expecting a sour pickle and got a sweet pickle. It's that it was trying to be sweet, sour, and salty all at the same time and not in a good way. It was like you handed a child a bunch of seasonings and was like, 
make a pickle, Johnny, and Johnny didn't know what pickles were supposed to taste like, and just dumped some stuff in, and then ate that. It was, it was so gross. I ate it. My girlfriend's looking at me. She's like, are you okay? I was like, this might be the most unique flavor I've ever tasted in my life. And then she confirmed that it was ulcers. Anyway, back to music. So what's going on here is, sure, we can hear that there's moments where the music is really sitting very easily in a box where I can share with you, oh, it's doing X. Oh, it's doing X. But there's a lot going on here where it is starting to break out of the mold. I definitely feel like we're out in the real world. There's dangerous possibilities. Adventure is hap Adventure is surely happening. Yeah, this is the mystery part of Mystery Dungeon, says Travel Master. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> that being said, let's check out this next one called Job Clear. So many interesting things happening here. Okay, so we start off in B flat, which is actually a key we've been in before. You've heard some of these sounds previously in the soundtrack. Now, it's not going to be exactly the same this time when you hear it. Okay, so let's talk about that right there, because that is really cool. Okay. Right? Okay. So, up until now, for the most part, we've been staying within... When we hear a happy song, like, eh, type a two in the chat if you would agree with me that this song sounds happy. Type a two in the chat if you would agree with me that it's reasonable to say that this song sounds happy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So here's the thing. Even though the song sounds happy, hey, Claudio9, great to see you first time chatter. What's happening is a little bit more complex and nuanced than happy. Like this right here. <laughs> This right here. Oh, that is so cool. So, this is how we can think about this. Even though this song feels happy, there's chords that are adding elements of texture and depth to the happiness that are not in and of themselves happy, which creates a more nuanced sound. Let's explore and understand one of these chords and how it's actually contributing to the overall sound to, well, make it feel a little bit more nuanced than just straight away happy. So, I'm going to need your participation on this one. Go ahead and listen to this and then type a 1 if you agree, type a 2 if you do not agree with what I say. So listen, I'm going to ask you a question, type a 1 if you agree, type a 2 if you don't agree. <laughs> Type a one, if this feels happy and safe. Type a two if you disagree. Type a one if this feels happy and safe to you. Okay. 
Okay. Now, listen. I'm going to change one. One of these sounds is going to change. The rest are going to stay the same. So there's three sounds happening. Here's sound one. Your sound two. Your sound three. Your sound two again. Your sound one again. Sound two. Sound three. Sound two. I'm going to change sound three. Now, ah, things start to change. It's not so straight away, straight down the middle happy now anymore, is it? Ah, so Incompetent Hero has an interesting perspective. Incompetent Hero says it sounds happy, but tired. Very interesting, Incompetent Hero. Like for me, that's happy, but it's like, it could get into a fight if it wanted to. Does, does that make sense? Like, it's happy, but like, don't mess with it. Yeah, like a stressed out worker, dead tired after every day. Wow. So this is translating to a lot of you as sounding the emotion of tired. Changing one sound. All of a sudden, it went from totally happy to this very like nuanced and intricate thing where we're getting this wonderful diversity of opinion and interpretation. That's by changing one sound. So this, this is what I mean by it's happy, but there's nuance to it. And this was not happening at the beginning of the OST, this level of nuance, this level of adding in just a little bit of flavor, a little bit of color. And so in, into addition with the story clearly progressing, as it is a video game, so the story must progress. I mean, usually does. I don't think I've ever played a game where the story didn't progress. The music is also progressing and becoming progressively nuanced. Having a little bit more color, a little bit more texture to it. All right, let's check out this next one. Break this sound on this 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 sang don this song down my goodness if i manage to keep track of my vowels my gosh won't it be a miracle today okay i'm gonna try and keep track of my vowels so d is one Setting up with one. Now, this is very Irish. So we have one, four, one, five, 
six. One over five. Four, five, one. Four. One. Two. Four. Five, uh, six. Four. Four. Five of five. To five. Building on five. Back to one. Alright, cheers some bits for me to rip a guitar solo over this as best I can. Put some bits in there, and I will do a guitar solo. 100 bits for a guitar solo. Going once. Going twice. <laughs> Going thrice. And... No guitar solo. Okay. To get heartwarming. Okay, well, another happy sounding song that's pretty much a fastball down the middle for the most part. D. Bradwell 5, by the way, shout out and thank you to D. Bradwell 5 for putting these playlists together. Thank you so very much. D. Bradwell 5 says, this is a remastered version of Awakening from the first mystery dungeon. Super cool. You know, I've never played any of the mystery dungeon Pokemon. I've played Red. I've played Yellow may have played blue. Uh, the one I spend the most time on was Sapphire. Sapphire was my game that I, you know, went through, beat tons of times. Every time I would get the uh, the water Pokemon, he was blue. He had the orange cheeks. Uh, you could teach him to do the mud blast. Oh, what was what was that guy's name? Mudkip. Yes, and what what did what did Mudkip evolve into? Because I kept Mudkip all the way to the end. Cuz see, I think that there's two ways to play Pokémon. All right, you ready for this? You didn't ask for it. You here for the music, but you're going to get my thoughts anyway. Swampert. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Marsh Stomp. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I think there's two ways to play Pokémon. The first is you run around and you kind of like pick a Pokemon as you go and you kind of build them up and then you get to a gym and you're like, okay, I need to go train them. Then you go train them and you farm them and then you bring them up and then you go kill the gym. The way I played Pokemon was I would get my one Pokemon to like level 20 just by like beating up Ratatatas <laughs> before I went anywhere. 
Then, the rest of the game, you just have fun. Because you've got your super-powered Pokemon, you go to the first gym, and you just destroy everyone. And then you just make sure you have one of each type, so you go to a gym, and you can cycle them out. Super cool. Oh, Pokemon is a spin-off game where you don't play this, but as a Pokemon exploring dungeons? <gasps> oh, that's so cool. Tell me my job says someone stop this madman. Listen, I like to win. I like to make sure I know I can win and then step in and win. <laughs> I like winning. Okay, this next one. If this title's not a foreshadowing about what the music's going to sound like, I don't know what is. It's called Growing Anxiety. Okay, let's break down and understand what's underpinning this feeling of anxiety. What's underpinning and creating this feeling of anxiety in the music and anticipation and mystery even is something called an augmented chord. An augmented chord. Now I'm going to play this augmented chord for you. Because this C augmented chord is kind of like what this song is starts off on. So you can be able to hear what I'm playing on the guitar is not going to match perfectly the music, but you can hear that it fits. Oops. Right. So type a one in the chat. If you can hear the guitars agreeing with the music, not playing exactly what's there, but it's agreeing with the music. Type a one if you can hear the guitar agreeing with the music. Hey, Kingfly. All right, type of one if you can hear the guitar agrees with the music. Okay, Travo, MFM. Okay, so it's agreeing with the music because what's happening here is an augmented chord. Now, an augmented chord is one of the most mysterious chords. Type a two. We're going to change the numbers up. Type a two if you find this chord to be mysterious. Mysterious. Okay, so we can take augmented chords. Smoke on the water with augmented chords. Ooh, that's rough, huh? How about walking on sunshine? with augmented chords. <laughs> I 
<laughs> so augmented chords create this feeling. of mysteriousness. And that is what gives you this feeling of growing anxiety. It's the use of augmented chords. Okay, the next one is called, Oh No, Oh No. All right, let's talk about this. It's supposed to be a guitar. Let's be real. This guitar riff right here. Oh, that is so fun to play and it sounds really cool. Why does it sound cool? Because we're using something called power chords and we're using them in a very particular way. A power chord is a chord with only two or three notes. This is a two note power chord. This is a three note power chord. You surely could make power chords with more than two or three notes, but typically, especially on a guitar, they're done with two or three. Now, the way we get into this power chord is which is not like the most metal thing we've heard so far in the soundtrack. I don't know what is. That's easily the most metal thing we've heard so far. Let's see if I can. Can we make this uh, can we make this a little, uh, let's see, a little bit more distortion? Oh yeah, let's do this. Type of three for that sounds super metal. So what's happening here is we're using power chords. And then the way we're using the power chords makes it sound even more metal. So the reason why it sounds super metal is because we're starting on one. We're going up a half step, up to the minor third, back to one, and then waiting, and then go one, back to flat seven. And comment in here also sounds very mega death. Now criticize the government. You have the full package. Yes. You take a mortal man and put him in control. <laughs> Let him become a god. <laughs> okay. Super cool. Yes. And so that sounds super duper metal. So surely this was either a boss fight or some danger. You're running away from something. That was super, super cool and also super fun to play on the guitar. This one's called Mount Bristle. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this does sound like it's getting, well, more difficult. And indeed, if I have any experience with video games at all, when you get on a mountain, usually something difficult is happening on a mountain. Like, type a one in the chat, or just type the name of a video game you can remember, where you went onto a mountain, and it wasn't more difficult than not being on the mountain. What is it about video games? Whenever we go on mountains, it's always harder. Oh, ACX Jet has some ideas. All right, what you got, ACX Jet? Oh, Seal RV also has one where the mountain was not as hard. Oh, Cloudy Yo9 has one where the mountain wasn't as hard. Okay, guys. Breath oh, Breath of the Wild. Okay, fair. Fair. Breath of the Wild, yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically speaking, the first time you go into the mountains in Breath of the Wild, it is harder because you don't have any of the fire gear. So I take issue with that just based on a linear perspective of playing the game, but okay. Yeah, so I hear what you're saying with Breath of the Wild. And also, if you play the game in a linear fashion, well, linear fashion, you can go anywhere in Breath of the Wild. So I apologize. I take that back. You can go to anyone. If you play the game the way I played the game... <laughs> which is the first place you went was the mountains, then the mountains sure were harder. <laughs> uh, I was like, well, if you do it in the order you're supposed to, then I was like, wait, hang on a second. There is no order you're supposed to. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Okay, so... What's making this sound a little heavy is... Well, we can just talk about the first part. It's alternating between 1 and 7. But there's no ordinary 1 and 7. The 1 is really a power chord implied to be minor. And then the 7 is minor for sure. And so we have 1 to 1 going back and forth minor, but the way it's presented here is not... A homey type of one to because look, we could go minor to minor. Doesn't sound too threatening. But when we go It sure sounds threatening going between one minor and then going down a whole step and still bringing that minor chord as well. Let's check out this next one. Well, I have a feeling this next one might in fact be a boss. 
But chat, you'll have to confirm this with me. This one's called Boss Battle. Okay, who wants to hear the Megalovania boss battle mashup? Someone put some bits in the chat to hear the Megalovania boss battle mashup. Bits for the mashup. Alright, MFM0X, let's do this thing. I will do my best. Let's give this a shot. Like, go ready to get hurt. Hashtag anticlimactic. Alright. For real this time. I don't know what happened there. Ah. Wow, uh, that was only worth about 10 bits there. <laughs> I wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if that was worth 10 cents, man. I'm sorry, I'll let you down on that one. Next time I do that, I will deliver. That was ridiculous. Okay, Time Gear Remix. In my brain, I'm like, we'll do it live!
Okay. Okay. So let's talk about what's actually going on here. This is pretty cool. Okay, so the chords that are being used here are really cool chords. And you hear these chords a lot in funk music. And these are, you take a major triad and you put the second in the bass. And it's going back and forth between two of these. So kind of creating a feeling of... By adding the two in, it destabilizes things. And when I say the two, what I mean is, if we think about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven we talked about before, the one in this case is D. So we have D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's going to be our one through seven. So two is going to be E. So we take D and then put two, or E, as the lowest note. And then we go down to C. Now if C is one, D is going to be the lowest note. There you go. So you can see my hands. And so the name of this chord is D over E, and then C over D. And that guesses that feeling. Okay, let's keep this thing going. Oh, I've basically heard this before. Okay. So before we get there, let's talk about the gatekeepers. So what we're hearing is there's a theme and an idea that's been presented a couple times so far in this original soundtrack, and that is having this sort of oompa bass, this. But here it's different. Or. Uh, It goes to the four. So we're still doing a tonic to subdominant movement. But there's this feeling of the oompa, 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 oompa. We heard that with the Wiggly Tough Guild, that it was oompa, 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 oompa. We heard that with when we talked to the person at the Wiggly Tough Guild. We hear it here with the gatekeepers, and we heard it another time. So we can definitely call this at least. Hmm. From a genre perspective, it matches that everyone has to walk everywhere. Incompetent hero, that's a very interesting observation. So incompetent hero brings up the fact that we have to walk everywhere. Maybe we don't have our bike yet, or maybe there is no bike in this game. Oh, yeah, because you're a Pokemon. Pokemon might not ride bikes. Anyway, so the whole thing about walking is walking, what type of music was designed for walking? That's a march. 
Marches were literally made for people to walk. That's why it's called a march. So you would march to the march. And so in a march, what happens is... You have a thing that happens in the lowest notes, and that's because it's going left, right, left, right. It's showing you, the music is showing you where to step. So incompetent here made a very interesting observation. Because we're walking so much, perhaps this is happening while we're walking. This left, right, 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 left, right. How interesting is that? Thanks for your insight, Incompetent Hero. Very astutely observed. And what a wonderful contribution to this stream. So thank you very, very much for taking the time to share that with all of us. Okay. Next one is called Outlaw. Outlaw, yeah. Now, if you listen, that's oh, gonna loop again. All right, so we're actually gonna pause this loop here, and we're gonna talk about this. So, in the in the last song, we were talking about how you're walking everywhere, and we have this um 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 um, and in the music, or this is literally walking music. A march is literally walking music. What do we have here? Well, we have running music. How do we know we have running music? Because this same pattern is being used, but it's sped up to show how fast the feet are moving. Ah, running. Left, right, 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 left, right. That's no march. That's a run. Very cool. So the music's actually giving us insight into how quickly you're moving. Let's check out I Saw Something again. want to guess what type of chords are being used here who doesn't already know music theory so anyone who's not a very experienced musician who's been here for the stream you want to guess what type of chords are being used here to make this sound mysterious if you already know music theory wait hold your answer let someone who doesn't quite know put it together seal rv you have got it well done these are augmented chords. Yes, MFM zero. Augmented chords, making this feel mysterious. Now that washboard sound, I've heard that pattern made with a washboard also with a You can also do that with a kibasa. Doesn't sound quite like that with a kibasa. And I'm not sure the name of it. So let's Google it. Like. 
mask. It looks like a fish. You hold it, and you hit it, and then you drag a little stick across the top, and I forget the name of it. Fish in instrument percussion. What's that thing called? A guiro. G-U-I-R-O. Guiro. We'll also get you that sound. Or close to it. So yeah, what we had right there, to answer the question in the chat. Yeah, Guiro. Well done, MFM. Yeah, so augmented chords making it feel mysterious. Again, fits the name, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, and then use that Guiro for percussion there. Yes, it is a common instrument to play in elementary school. That's where I had first exposure to it. I think probably only exposure to it. This next one is called Waterfall Cave. Let's do this thing. Oh, it sounds like Undertale so much. Like the arpeggio, not the strings. Gosh, that does sound like Undertale. Like when you're around the Temi area. Let's do a poll, guys. We're going to do a poll. Because this is nuts. This is wild. If you've played Undertale... Okay, so, here's the question. Does this sound like Undertale to you? I'm gonna let that vote run. Oh, we have four and four. Uh, if not, why not? Not Temi's area, the area around Temi's, like when you're underground. Oh, it's called Waterfall. Yes, yes it is. That's right. Yeah, Waterfall Cave. How interesting is that for that sonic description of a waterfall area to line up so perfectly? Oh, sure. I'm not saying the melodies. I'm saying that sound, the sound, the quality of the sound, the timber, the quality of the sound. Okay. Sweet. All right. So let's do this. We're going to go ahead and check out this next one, which is called Kekleon's Shop. Kesleon's Shop. I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's give it a shot, whatever it is.
and we're getting the same arpeggio that we've heard at the guild. Yeah. This is a recycled version of the guild. The, uh, the, the wiggly tufts. Okay, so we're finding an interesting, a very interesting, interesting thing where every time we're in a workshop, we're hearing a similar thing, and that is this. That. We're hearing that every time we're like in a workshop or in a shop or a, a guild, that's music of, and what's interesting is like that's put in there partly to let you know with the music that you're in a safe space. You will not be attacked in this space. Like you're at a shop, you're here to hang out, you're here to talk to people. There's no danger. And you're understanding there's no danger immediately when you hear this music. I'm assuming there's no danger in the shop. Yeah, light motifs exactly. But this light motif is not even a light motif for a person, place, or thing. No, indeed, it's a light motif for a situation. The situation is no danger. How cool is that? Yeah, as long as you don't cause trouble. There's danger of accident. I mean, there's always danger of accidentally not paying, and that's why we walk up to the counter and we pay. <laughs> Like, in life, in general. I'll go check out Team Skull. I guess uh, Team Rocket was already taken, huh? Yeah, exactly. Comedy relief villains. Okay, let's talk about what's going on here. Guys, there's something going on in this that you might not be hearing that I want to bring your ears attention to. So if you have some headphones, pop them on. And here's the thing. Don't turn them up all the way because you can actually cause yourself hearing damage by listening to music at loud volumes for long periods of time. So always want to make sure you're not listening at full volume. Now, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to point this out to you. There's a whistling, wobbling woo type of a sound going on in this. There you 
There you go. Just ended. Did you hear it? I'll play it again. <laughs> Type a one if you can hear that whistling sound. Type a two if you cannot. I'll point it out to you again. Like that MFM. <laughs> MFM, do you hear it now? Excellent. So, what an interesting thing because I was going to say it says. Team Skull, and as we know from Pokemon, if there's a team something, usually it's someone bad. But what's super interesting is to make sure that it's understood that even though there's a threat to you from this team, you're not really in real danger. That's the whole thing about Pokemon, right? Essentially, it's a game designed for children. And so children, you don't want to make them feel like they're really in danger, right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit of, ooh, right? And have this like this bizarre thing almost like a balloon right like a like have you ever taken a balloon and made the balloon go right it's almost like playing with a balloon like that it's making you to it's making you feel like even though there might be a threat here there's something really silly and you don't need to take the threat seriously about this <laughs> okay let's check out Spinda's Cafe. We can hear an umpa again here, and the umpa again is showing us. Well, it wasn't always that the umpa was showing us we were safe because we heard the umpa with the thief. We did hear the umpa with the guild. We heard the umpa in the shop, along with the arpeggio. So we don't have that. We don't have that arpeggio that we had showing us that we're very, very safe. Come 
Oh, what a lovely little lick. Oh, let, let, let's put some oomph on that. I love that. How cool and how fun is that? All right, let's keep this thing going. With Ludicolo Dance. Ludicolo Dance. Ludicolo... I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, let's do it. Well, we'll leave that and check out Applewoods. <laughs> How long are we to send the five for? Oh, we're hanging out. What's happening here? Number one. This is the second piece we've heard in 6-8, I believe. Now, what's interesting is that the chord this is hanging out on, this A flat dominant, what we've heard, and this is why I said uh, 20 some odd songs ago, the influence of the blues on this soundtrack. And the influence of the blues is that we can take a dominant chord, which means it's not major, it's not minor, it's a different quality altogether, it's dominant and that we can treat a dominant as being a one. Now, while that did happen historically, technically, before the blues, the blues is really where we can see that that's a thing. And that's where we take it and use it a whole bunch. So, using the one dominant is such an interesting choice because it creates a feeling of, I want to say playfulness. Because if we just, listen, I'm going to play the one just major. I'm going to play the one dominant. So comment in the chat what word you would... I use the word playful. You don't have to use that word. You might want to also use that word. But what word do you use to describe this? What 
word? What word would you use? Playful, okay. Playful mood. Let's get one more description. Playful does seem, says in comment here, yes. And so we can see that even the, the chords that are being used, the choices that are being made in the music are playful. This is a game for kids. It's supposed to be playful. And so the music creates that feeling of playfulness, of play, of it's fun and playful. Not just fun, not just happy, but happy and playful. Let's do this thing. Okay. We're going to start off with Craggy Coast. All right, I want to point something out to you that you may not have noticed. If you did, good ears. And that is, there's a whole section of the song where one note stays the same the whole time. And that's the bass. The bass is going to play one note. So type a one in the chat if you can hear that bass, just playing that one note. Type a one in the chat. Lurkers, if you want to type a one, I will not call you out. You are safe. I will not draw attention to you. If you would like to participate, you may participate safely and I will not call you out. Now. Having that there, that's like... Ah, well, maybe it's, let's go back and listen to it. actually grab the chords, what's happening on top of that. 
Oh, that's also, by the way, another thing we've heard before. We've heard the... We heard that in an earlier song as well, which is really cool. So we have... And so what happens with that? That feels very much like an 80s thing. Feels like a Van Halen thing. Feels like a jump thing. And so really, it's like there's one note and then the chord's on top. It's really hanging out on one chord, but to change it and make it feel exciting, there's a couple notes that are moving around within this one chord to make it feel a little bit more exciting than just, like, how boring would it be if it was just this? As opposed to... so much more exciting so it's a way of actually extending one single chord over a longer period of time by changing a couple of notes so in this case we have the one the three and the five so going one three five one four five so this is a a flat major triad now it's an a flat sus four yes this chord is sus now we come down to an a flat sus two again the chord is in fact sus and then we come back to a flat and then we do a flat major again a flat sus four and then bringing it up to an A-flat-5. Really cool, an interesting way of taking one single chord just by changing the third up, suspending it up to the fourth, and suspending the third down to the second, and then bringing that up to the fifth is creating a little internal melody, an internal movement within the chord itself. Anyone want to guess what mysterious chord is showing up here from time to time? So like, it sounds innocent, maybe a little precarious, like you have to balance, but like you're safe. Playful. Oh, but right there, a little bit of danger. Right there. Right there, danger. 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 Now it's going augmented. Now it's using the whole tone scale. Yeah. So, Brits. If there's any Brit, hey, is anyone from uh, the United Kingdom here on this chat right now, in this live? Type a two if you're from the UK. Type a two if you're from the UK. Born in the UK, I was born. All right, CLRV, you ready? Because we have the augmented chord. So we're going to go, Augie, Augie, Augie. And you say, you know. I tried to learn the ways of your people.
Pudgy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I took an interest in your culture. I learned your ways. <laughs> uh, actually, I have a British passport. Anyway. All right. Mount Horn, let's do this thing. Oh, heck yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Guys, we're having another... We're having another one of those. We heard this in Earthbound. We heard this somewhere else, too. If I recall correctly, it was... Gosh, it was Shostakovich or Stravinsky. Someone with an S. Yeah, yeah. Mother 3, we heard it in, in Amineko. And it was based off of, uh, someone had it in the previous chat. I forget what. I think it was, I think it was Shostakovich, Stravinsky. Someone with an S. The last movement of their symphony. Yeah, Porky's theme. Type a one in the chat if you can hear Porky's theme and what's being played right now. Shostakovich, symphony number five finale. Thank you. What's really cool is if you listen to the left ear and the right ear. And in the right ear, it's dup, but do get the duck at the dope to butt, but do get the duck at the book to butt, but do. And having those two rhythms play against each other, if you pay attention to what's happening in the left ear and the right ear, it creates such an interesting effect and such an interesting, well, feeling and indeed a vibe. Man, love that play of those two parts against each other. Yes, to be clear, Dmitry Shostakovich, Symphony Number no. Five Finale, which now that I've seen it again, hopefully I will remember. Now let's check out the Foggy Forest.
arpeggio is like so Enya. Okay, now, do you want to know what makes the foggy forest seem a little mysterious? Seem intriguing? And indeed, yes, Red Rock, you're ahead of me. Love it. Red Rock's already on to it. We've got a James Bond theme idea going on in this, what's it called? Misty Forest, Foggy Forest? Foggy Forest. So just like in James Bond, there's this element of mystery, an element of intrigue. In the foggy forest, I'm assuming it's mysterious because it's foggy. So at the very beginning, we have... It's got a touch of the James Bond. And so by bringing that little bit of James Bond in there, by the way, shout out to anyone who spent, guys, what was it? Oh my gosh, hang on one second, guys. I wanna get something. This is, this is, this is gonna be worth the wait. Hold on, I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna be back in like two seconds and it's gonna be worth the wait. So hold on. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna be right there. I'm gonna be right there. My favorite mode of major, Lydian. Lydian dominant, probably. Eh, I also really like a, um, a Hungarian major. I like a Hungarian major too. But if we have to, my favorite mode of the diatonic major scale, probably Dorian. Okay, I'm back. If any of you, like me, spent hundreds of hours of your childhood playing this game right here on GameCube. <gasps> Where is it? Oh, it's probably actually in the GameCube. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah! <laughs> Where'd my disc go? Yeah. It's in the old cube. Oh, love this thing. Best 12 bucks I ever spent in my life, I tell you. Yes, I also did play it on PS1. Such a good game. Oh my gosh. So anytime I hear the James Bond theme, I get to relive the glory days of when you would play state of the art and you'd get the rocket launcher <laughs> and you just sit and wait for someone <laughs> to walk by. And then with the rocket launcher, you could see the rocket. So you could shoot the rocket, and then if you pressed the button, you'd actually see what the rocket was seeing. You could go literally go around corners. <laughs> so you could be there, like the snow map. Just legit, someone's like behind the other building at the top of the hill, and you'd fire a rocket. And then just like... <laughs> so much fun. Okay. Back to the music.
Alright, I'm, re I'm ready to be hurt again. I'm ready to be hurt again. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to love again. So I'm put some bits in the chat for a guitar solo on this. FM Zero X, I was so down for a good time. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna check out the upper steam cave. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so what can we hear between Steam Cave and Upper Steam Cave? Well, number one, 
Maybe Dan should listen more and play less, first of all. Second is we are a connection between, well, the idea of what's happening. Now, what's interesting is that the steam cave and the upper steam cave, the music in the upper steam cave is technically down a whole step in terms of key. So by actually going up, excuse me, by going up in the steam cave, we actually go down in the music. How interesting is that? What an interesting juxtaposition. Hmm. Let's check out the amp planes. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yes, please. Loses me there. Oh, I get lost there. Okay, let's talk about groove. What makes a groove? Well, feeling makes a groove. In this case, what's making the groove is also the play between all the different parts, all the different instruments, and it's like a machine that comes together. It's like an engine that drives the music. So for example, Want to make it still valid, and that is, it's all the different parts coming together. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the ripcord on this one and jump too far away.
All right, can I tell you the, my favorite part of both Amp playing songs? It's right here. It's right here. That. Let me show you again. Oh my gosh. It's like supposed to be a horn rip, like by trumpets in a horn section. But even with it as it is, without the real horn, sounds so cool. It sounds like a musical zipper. Or like opening a musical bag of chips. So cool. Type it too in the chat if you agree with me that it sounds something like opening a musical bag of chips. <laughs> or indeed a musical zipper. Zip. Ra, MFM Zero, Red Rocks, Claudio Nine. Oh, CLR, CLRV says it's time to panic. Oh dear, the next song is called Monster House, and then Rising Fear. My goodness, this is escalating. Kind of like thriller a little bit. Working in the dark. Out of the moon. Like you see a sex that almost starts to hard. It's sex screen. This is very thriller. Yeah, this one feels like Thriller. If anyone knows a song by Michael Jackson named Thriller and listening to this, type a one if you hear the connection between this and Thriller. Very thriller. So let's see what happens after we leave this monster house and we go into rising fear. Oh dear.
Okay, so this is really interesting. It's like groups of 10 most of the time. And so those groups of 10, it's very uncommon to hear groups of 10 in music. 5-8, yeah, maybe 5-4, and those are eighth notes. We wouldn't know. We'd have to see the sheet music to know for sure. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 10-8, maybe it's 10-4, 10-4. But if that's possible, that's the time signature. That's wild. Type a three in the chat if you could hear it slow down just then. You heard it literally slow down. The music slowed down. Type a three in the chat if you could hear that. If you couldn't hear it, type a two. I want to hear from you if you couldn't hear it. Couldn't hear it, let me know. Okay, you guys can hear that. That's really cool. So. There's a couple different ways that can happen. Uh, the first is you could have a rallentando, and the second is a retardando. And there's a little bit of ambiguity, at least in my experience, uh, talking to people I've talked to and reading the books I've read, and also writing the books I've written about retardando and rallentando. 
But suffice it to say that both mean we're going to slow down in the middle of the piece of music. And then we return to the speed. Now, in this, there wasn't an immediate return to the speed. There was actually an acceleration back to the speed. And so that would be an accelerando. Accelerando. Also said accelerando because, you know, we're American. We see two Cs. And so we say s instead of ch. So accelerando or accelerando. And that means you're speeding back up to reach the speed. And then when you reach the speed, you would have an a tempo. A space T-E-M-P-O. Tempo means time in Italian. So it means at the time, at the same speed. If you imagine like a clock hand moves at the same speed. So that, that's the speed of time. And so we're measuring the speed of time. We're saying, okay, we're going to slow down. We're going to speed back up. And then we're back to the same speed of time. How cool is that? Check out Quicksand Cave. Yeah, come on, horns. It does have a very rhythm. <laughs> it is very rhythm. <laughs> oh, I was, gonna, I was gonna leave it at that. It is very rhythm. Like, true statement. Wow, guys, the groove, the rhythm in these desert areas is just delicious. In fact, I would describe this as being very, very, very rhythm. Very, very rhythm. And I love it. It's freaking awesome. It's so cool. What makes it so cool, Dan? Well, here's a couple things that make it so cool. Just that rhythm of the guitar is really cool. And then we have a rhythm going on in the right ear. And when you start taking these rhythms and you put them against each other, oh, oh, it's so good. It makes such a good groove. It's delicious. It's delightful. Let's see what delicious grooves await us in quicksand pit. Let's check it out.
long since I played RuneScape. That's delightful. Let's check it out again. That guitar part? That's sick. I mean, that right there is so cool. Thanks, Red. Hey, Red Rock, do you have a perfect pitch? That that was very, very quickly sussed out. Oh, delightful. Now, what makes this so delightful to me is that there's a lot of fight and tension. Ah, uh, Red Rock has perfect pitch. Well, Red Rock, I've only got, like, some decent relative pitch on me. So, you know, <laughs> if, anyone, if anyone wants to experience the uh, near clairvoyant experience of having someone in the chat with perfect pitch, we have Red Rock, who has perfect pitch. What perfect pitch means is I can play any note or groups of notes, and Red Rock is going to be able to say which notes are being played without having to really think about it that much. This is a gift many people have called perfect pitch. I don't have this gift. You don't have to have this gift to work at music, to get better at music, even to be good or great at music. It's not required. But wow, is it a nifty thing to have. Because I'm sitting there going, hang on, I hear there's this E. I hear there's like a C. Uh, no, that's not it. And then I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, there's a B. OK, yeah. I'm like, okay, there we go. And Red Rock's like, hey, by the time I got to the chat, Red Rock had already said what the notes were. Yes, a blessing and a curse, because I'm sure, like, my guitar is just a teensy, beensy, eensy, weensy bit out of tune, and it's not bothering me one bit. And <laughs> it's like an ice pick for you. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Here we are.
Oh my gosh! Polyrhythm alert! Wow, triplet. I think that's the first triplets we've heard in this entire soundtrack, which is wild. That's really cool. So, and this is what I'm really interested to see. I am really interested to see what happens as we go through, like that's the first time we've heard triplets, right? And we're, whatever, part two out of maybe six. And so we've definitely seen a rise in complexity in terms of the harmony up to this point. But I think that's the first time we can really, well, sure, we could look at this entire groove thing we've heard so far as an increase in complexity in the rhythm. But actually bringing in triplets into simple meter. This is the first time we've heard this in this entire soundtrack. So what does that mean? Okay, so in simple meter, uh, these are time signatures like 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, and 2-4. And in simple meter, each beat unit, in this case the quarter note, and 2, 4, 3, 4, and 4, 4, is divided into two equal parts. These are called the beat divisions. It's divided into four equal parts. These are called the beat subdivisions. Now, we can divide it into three equal parts. When we're doing that, we call these triplets. Because it's not the way the beat is normally divided. This is like borrowing from compound meter. In compound meter, the beat unit, if we're in 6, 8, is going to be a dotted quarter note. And the dotted quarter note gets three beat divisions and six beat subdivisions. Very interesting. This is the first time we've heard triplets in this soundtrack. Let's check out Crystal Crossing. Oh, heck yes.
guys, this is all about the groove. It's all about the groove. And so it's like the effect. Yes. Sick. Sick groove. Oh. All right, let's check out this next one at the end of the day. So you guys want to know what chord just made a return here, and it's not the mysterious augmented chord. No, indeed. What just made its return was the major chord with the two in the bass. In this case, it was essentially an E flat with an F in the bass. Now, I was actually just talking about this. I got a music theory class on Saturdays uh, with some people. It's a private class. Uh, it's actually by invitation only. and. We were talking literally about having a two in the bass leading to then a five, so like this. And the whole thing about having a chord with the two of the bass is yes, we can think about this as being an E flat with an F in the bass, and rightly so, it really is creating a predominant area. However, if we think about things like five sus four, to five, and we think about both of those chords as essentially extending the dominant area and extending the tension of the dominant area. I think we can make an argument that when you have a four with the two in the bass, which really means the five is in the bass of the four, that in fact it is extending the tension of the dominant area because, in the same way that a sus four to three chord of a dominant area elongates the tension, as we just established. If we look at this chord right here, and we consider the root to be F, so we no longer think of it as being an E flat with an F in the bass. Rather, we think of it as being an F with a four, flat seven, and a two. It's like all that's missing, we have four and two, and seven. It's like, how much more tension do you want to bring those two notes up to actually then hit the five to bring us back to one. And so 
I was making a case and really exploring what function this chord holds when it's specifically in this context, when specifically we have a four chord with a five in the bass that then leads to essentially a dominant area or in fact is the dominant area as it was here in this song and how that that whether or not that was in fact a subdominant area chord that led to a dominant area chord or in fact was the dominant area chord the whole time and it was essentially an extension of the dominant just like a sus4 resolving down to not having a sus4 dominant chord would be extending the dominant so a little bit of advanced music theory there but uh I wanted to share that with you because I think it's an interesting thought. And we didn't come to there being a specific answer. I think there can be arguments made for both sides. And I'm sure someone somewhere is like, oh, that Dan, he has no idea what he's talking about. It's like, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. Because I think we can think about it that way as really extending the dominant area. Food for thought in the future. Okay, so I think what's interesting to talk about here is that this chord progression is inverted. Now, I may be missing some other things here too, but an interesting thing here is that we have essentially an F major to an E minor on a very sort of low resolution fundamental level. And I think what's really cool is we've heard this E minor to F before, but it's always been like... E minor comes first, then F. This time it's reversed. E minor 9, yeah. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, that's, there was actually a nine in there, Red Rocks. Let's check out Planet's Paralysis.
Well, then it's technically it's a B flat over F. That's not going to be a G minor 7. I also think of it as being like an F sus4. This is a wild piece of music. Guys, what's happening at this point in the game? Wow, dire dark situation running for your life. Sounds like it. Wait, it's like, it sounds sad, foreboding, and there's movement to it. It's really, really interesting. Complete collapse of civilization, okay.
So D. Bradwell made a very interesting observation right here, and that was that the maracas almost sound like running, or like, <laughs> like panting. Yeah, it's like you have to run away from something. You're hearing the panting. Chasm Cave. Hmm. What a wild turn this OST has taken. Like, we started off like... <laughs> we started off like... And then we went... And I was like, ooh, something's happening. And now we are like so off the deep end of anything I thought was going to happen. I thought this game was going to be sunshine and rainbows, but no. <laughs> Surely not. This is getting wild. Yeah, think again, I'd say. My goodness. This is very, um, uh, Mario, like, uh, the, when you start in the castles, Super Mario World. Guys, back me up on this. It's, it's like quartal harmony. Yeah. Huh. That's really wild. Huh. Got it. Okay, that's looping there. So let's actually break down this little thing that I was very interested in. Which, my goodness, we heard in another OST recently as well. But the, I am like over 90% sure at either the beginning of the haunted houses or the castles in Super Mario World. We have something almost the same. Yeah, something almost the same as that, or the same as that. So let's understand what this sound is. This is something called, yeah, it's when you fight browser. Yes, I thought it was. So what this is, this is called quartal harmony. I'm gonna put it in the chat, because it's kind of a funky word. Q-U-Q-U-R-T-A-L. Quartal, quartal, quartal is in 
quarters, as in fourths. So what's happening is every note, we're going up one fourth from the note before, or a perfect fourth. Well, we'll see about the perfect fourth. Yeah, yeah, perfect fourth, okay. So we have G to C. From G to C, G is one, A is two, B is three, C is four. From C, we go up a four, so now C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, so we have F. Now F is one, G is two, A is three, B flat is four. Now B flat is one, C is two, D is three, E flat is four. D. Bradwell's got the jokes. And so that's called quartal harmony. It's when you use fourths. So every note in the chord is a successive fourth stacked on top of each other. It's the most basic way of thinking about it. So you have a note, and then it's one, one perfect fourth up as you go. Now you can also think about quartal harmony from a diatonic perspective, in which case it wouldn't always be perfect fourth. Sometimes you'd have a tritone in there. Okay, let's check out Sealed Ruin. So you get really, really beautiful rhythms, like even right here at the end. And just how all the rhythms are playing against each other is really sweet. Yeah, this arpeggio going, and we've actually seen this a couple times. Since we've been in this desert area, now I'm assuming Sealed Ruin may or may not, in fact, be the desert. It may be a different place, but regardless, this composer, who is the composer, by the way, is using some really interesting tools, like having a consistent arpeggio going on in the back. Like in a couple of the desert tunes, there was a guitar holding a consistent arpeggio. Now, what's an arpeggio, you might be wondering? An arpeggio is a type of broken chord. So it's when we take a chord, remember that's more than one note put together, and we break it up. We go one note at a time. That's an arpeggio. Like that. It's an arpeggio. It's breaking up the chords. And so having that arpeggio, those single notes, it actually acts as a sort of it acts as percussion. It acts as rhythm. 
Let's check out Sealed Ruin Pit. Okay, so it's looping now. So I'm actually gonna talk you through this as we go through. Notice how the notes are rising. Notes are rising. This is building tension. Ah. Now this is like, either scary, or like scary and sad. That's what it translates to me as man. Wow. That is really cool. Let's check out Dusk Forest. Alright, so it's loopy now, I'll talk through it. So this doesn't sound nearly as mysterious as the, was it the foggy forest? Now this doesn't feel safe. Like right here. Like there's danger, there's a little bit of anxiety. Hear those arpeggios and then being doubled up every time they come back that's wild with the rhythms twice as fast when they come back so check this out all 
Alright, so look. Alright, it's quadrupled. So listen to this. The first time this arpeggio goes... It's one note. It's one attack per note. An attack is when you start a note. And that many attacks per note. Yeah, two two attacks per note there. That's really cool. Really interesting. Not something I've seen before. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I would definitely like company when I go through the dark forest. Preferably someone who knows jujitsu. All right, let's check out Deep Dark, Deep Dusk Forest. I was joking, that was like a major arpeggio with a flat six there. So let's actually break down that one little arpeggio right there, because that's really cool. We've heard this sound through many different soundtracks. And indeed, you can hear it for uh, Rivendell and like the Lord of the Rings. This sound is really fascinating. So we have an arpeggiated major triad. So we have one, three, five, and then we have what we could call sharp five, but because we already have five, I'm gonna call it flat six. Instead of, so it's one note away from being augmented. So it's partially mysterious. It's mysterious on its mother's side of the family, indeed. What a wonderful little arpeggio. Super cool. Hey, let's check out this next one called The Power of Darkness. Join me and together we will rule the galaxy. Quartal harmony again. So 
So what we have here is multiple, multiple iterations of this quartal harmony we're hearing again. So it's, we have in every case, and we're sliding it around, so. So in every case, what we have is we have a one, then we're going up by four, and then we're going up by four again. And that's what creates this sound right here. Quarter, Q-U-A-R-T-A-L, quartal, quart, like a quarter, like four, quartal harmony. Super cool and absolutely love it. Hey guys, thank you all so much for joining me on the stream. I will see you next time. We'll do a special stream maybe next week, but I'll be on vacation part of next week and spend some time with my family catch up hang out rest recuperate and we'll be rocking and rolling from there so look out for some special streams if i have time to do that and if not i will see you all in two weeks i'm actually going to have a little bit of vacation so hope you have a fantastic fantastic phenomenal rest of your day and i will see you all very very soon what we're going to do uh, real quick before we call it a day is we're just going to go ahead and read some super chats i think would be a nice thing to do oh uh, i say super chats but they're not super chats anymore are they they're donations and they are cheers but you know old habits die hard and that's okay so let's see okay okay let's see there we go Okay, okay, so let's go into Streamlabs. Let's see what's doing. So for today, we'll read what came through live today. It is yo, 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 coming at you with another dono for Sonic Unleashed, says the return of the Space Cowboy. You got it. J2O Juiced, since you're going to be covering Pokemon music, I would like to add Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, plus the Platinum tracks to the list. That's exciting. Platinum is like an enhanced version of DP, like yellow is to red and blue. And J2O Juiced again says, in honor of Persona 3 Remake being announced recently, I would like to upvote Persona 5 Royale. You got it. And Ronnie Moo says, a vote for Final Fantasy 14. I love your Umineko analysis, by the way. Well, thank you so much for your support there, Ron Emu. Thank you very, very much. It's very generous of you. And thank you, of course, this Return of Space Cowboy and J2O Juiced, longtime supporters of the channel. We have one more from Dai. Ste die steak who says we'd love to see subnautica with say you've got it we will make that happen it's on the list we'll make sure we get that hooked up in there and then cheers from today smash mat coming in saying oh man i forgot about this i'll have pokemon mystery dungeon i'll definitely have to rewatch the vod to see all your reactions but first let me take a selfie no but first another push for pizza tower ost fantastic phenomenal yeah, D. Bradwell might take a second to come through. Might take a second to come through. Let's see. Oh, no, D. Bradwell just came through. Uh, glad to make it to the Rascal Animation uh, OST. Hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Part 3 is the end of the main story. Get ready for an amazing batch of songs. This goes towards Xenoblade 3. You got it, D. Bradwell. Thank you all so, so very much for joining me today on the stream. I will see you all next time. Take care and goodbye. Welcome, welcome. Let's rock this roll. For Best Music Coach, my name is Dan, and you're watching a music teacher's reaction live in real time to the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon original soundtrack, which I have never heard before. I have played other Pokemon games, but not this particular one. So everything I say to you talk about Teach Breakdown is going to be off the top of my head in the moment as we go. Hey, everyone in the chat. How's it going, chat? Say hi in the chat. It'll it'll appear like right, you know, spatial awareness here. <laughs> I found it. We're going to get rocking and rolling. Hi. Oh, see, it was right there. Boom. Boom. Okay, let's get straight to it. Bonjour, bonjour. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, hey, hey. All right, let's get rocking and rolling with track 55, Tree Shroud Forest, which I believe is indeed where we left off. So we're going to start. We're going to get started with Tree Shroud Forest. Forest. I'm just going to double check and make sure you're going to hear the sound when I play it. Okay, you should. All right, let's get this thing rock and rolling.
All right, I think we're looping here, so I'm actually gonna talk through it this time. Okay, so part of what's making this sound so mysterious is the arpeggio that's happening. The and you can hear if you're wearing headphones that this arpeggio is going back and forth as if to discombobulate you. Now ascending and descending arpeggio. One, two, three, four. Type one in the chat if you can hear that little little thing that's happening there. The type type a type a one in the chat if you can hear that. Yeah, okay. Deep Bradwell's got it. Grayson's got it. J to a juice got it. Also. That thing you hear it moving around. I think it's getting a little fuzzy. So mysterious indeed. Very. Very. Very mysterious. So, tree shroud for us. It does, doesn't even seem shrouded. Shrouded in mystery. We've been hearing some very interesting connections so far in this OST between mysterious places and then music that sounds mysterious. You might say, well, Dan, that's pretty on the nose and kind of a fastball down the middle. Why'd you even bother saying that? And, well, I don't really know. But I just said it. So we're going to continue on to Brine Cave and see if I have something a little bit more productive to say when we get there, other than restating things that I just said. Like, there's a green tree, and the tree is green. <gasps> and y'all like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we got it the first time. Let's keep it rocking and rolling. Goodness, this loops. I made a second time on this one.
Okay, well, I lost it right at the end there. But up to that point, a very interesting piece of music. So it starts off with this. And what's happening here is this is an inverted power chord. So if I was to play this out of inversion, we'd have. So what we're doing is we're taking this lowest note and we're popping it up above the highest note. So lowest note, highest note, taking the lowest note, popping it up above the highest note to make a new highest note. Which is pretty interesting, uh, like an opening riff, an interesting idea. And then it goes into this sort of 1-4 type thing in... So 1 and 4 in B minor, now 1 and 4 in D, so D to G7, D minor, excuse me, G7, and sorry for the rhythm there. Now what's really interesting here is that it goes 1 to 4 in G, it was like we stay here. So it's these one to fours that are being moved around. First time one to four we hear it, it's a minor one to a dominant four. Second time we hear minor four again to a dominant four. The third time we hear it, however, dominant four, excuse me, dominant one to dominant four. Very interesting because we've heard some one to fours so far throughout this soundtrack and hearing it brought back in this way is very interesting. I love to hear your thoughts, anyone in the chat. Yeah, well, it's also jazzy the way I'm playing it, but like, um, it is jazzy, uh, and it's more like modal jazz, and it's more sort of like Carlos Santana type jazz, or funk jazz, or a funk fusion type of a thing. Those two chords, very common uh, to be played in those types of genres. Oh, let's check out Lower Bridge Cave. <laughs> Interesting.
Whoa, what an odd thing at the end there. Hey, let's go back and just listen to that, just that little bit right there. What an odd thing. So look, this is basically also implying a one to four. You could also say it was one the whole time. Maybe I'm imagining a four there. Ah. Okay, so we have a one, and then technically going up to a two, but here's why I'm saying four. You'll, un you'll understand why. It's because it's still in that same mode. Sorry, my eyes like crazy itchy. I thought, I thought my eye was going to explode last week. You know, I hate it when people who are like doing streams start talking about stuff not related to stream, but I want to tell you the story because it's funny. I went to the eye doctor last week, thought my right eye was going to explode. It felt like swollen. It's like I laid down, I could like feel my pulse, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like going to lose my eye. So I go to the eye doctor, they're like, you've had allergies in your eye for months. You need allergy drops in your eye. Like, I don't know if you guys noticed, but on streams, I'm always like itching my eyes. Apparently, I have allergies in my eyes, and I just thought eyes were itchy. Okay, so we have one too but the way that this is being harmonized here is that it's taking all the notes from a dorian right i'm not making that up no i'm not so this is dorian so it's taking all the same notes as we would use in a one to four but using different chords so that's why i was thinking one to four because that sound is it's using all the same notes as a one to four but with different chords very cool all right let's check out this next one and oh my gosh i may itch my eyes as we're going lord have mercy oh uh hidden land I may need to change my contacts. <laughs> Oops.
I recognize that corporation from like uh, giant steps maybe. actually talk about a couple things here that are pretty interesting. Number one, this song actually for a lot of the time is also doing a one to four. So we're hearing so many songs going to four, but this time instead of going one minor to four dominant, it's going one minor to four minor. So and then it goes to four and then back to one. Now let's talk also about this arpeggio thing here because this is really cool. So this is delightful for many reasons. So it's going one, two, flat three, flat seven. A beautiful, beautiful sound. We actually hear it repeated again. Up a minor third. And if you recognize this in this change between these two, not the actual notes themselves, but if this relationship sounds familiar, well, that's because you've been listening to Final Fantasy. If I just played that right, which I believe I did in terms of that relationship there, that relationship of a minor third is what you hear on Final Fantasy VII Ultimate. Should be good to go. All right, let's rock and roll. With Hidden Highland. So same key as Hidden Land. But music's obviously a little different in terms of feeling. Four, the four minor, the five minor, the six, five minor, four minor, five minor. Ooh, going somewhere else now. Okay, so now we're going to minor four here, to minor five, to six, flat six, major seven, back to four, to four, five. And then it lost me there, but What's really cool here, this is the connection between uh, first the Hidden Land and now Hidden Highlands. Number one, they're, they're in the same key. So I'm going to actually show this to you. We listen to Hidden Land. Type of one if you can hit what I'm doing on my guitar agrees with the music. Type of one in the chat if you can hear what I'm doing agrees with the music. Type of one. Type of one in the chat. 
chat. One in the chat. Right here. You can hear what I'm doing. Yes, T. Brad will give you the degrees. Okay. Yeah, pure resonance. Good, good, good ears. Pure resonance would work. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and I'm gonna see I'm not gonna move my hand. Ah, and if you hear that this also agrees. Type a two if you can hear that this also agrees. Type a two if you can hear that this agrees too. By the way, hi lover of beards. Type a two if you can hear that this also agrees. Not in the same exact way, but in a very similar way, this agrees. Yes, very good. Good ears. And so what we're hearing here is a connection in terms of the home base of the music between Hidden Land and Hidden Highland. That means they're in the same key, or we can think of them as being in the same key. They're both in the key of B-flat minor. And indeed, they both share similar chords. So in Hidden Land, it's B minor to E-flat minor. And in Hidden Highland, we hear B-flat minor to E-flat minor. We also hear an F minor and a G-flat major 7. But besides that, we can hear that there's two chords in common and a key in common, and that's actually a connection between Hidden Land and Hidden Highland, and why I assume they're actually going to be a similar geographical area, and they're connected somehow in the story. And the music tells that by keeping it in the same key, the same sound, the same home base. Let's check out this next one, which is called Battle Against Dusk Noir. Oh, if I was a character in a book, I wish my name was Dusk Noir. Dusk Noir slowly opened the computer, put their guitar on, and react to Pokemon music. Ooh. This is, this is pretty cool too. So we're actually seeing, and this, this is also so cool because we've now done all these music reactions and I'm starting to create these meta connections that I never would have thought of otherwise. So this pattern right here, this repeating pattern, we've heard this same idea, not these same exact notes, but very similar notes, either three out of four or three out of five matching this pattern right here. So. Or, or. So, uh, uh, I think in uh, Final Fantasy we heard either, or something like that. We've heard, oh, there was a OST where we listened to a house that came alive, I think had something like that in it. We've heard so many times that a boss theme, and by the way, if you're planning on composing video game music, here's a clue for you. If you want to make boss themes it's like use one two flat three any combination thereof and if you want to add notes in 
Sure, adding a tritone in is going to be a good move. That's going to be nice and dissonant and really make that whole idea of a boss theme translate. But here we're at... And then just like Final Fantasy when it takes up a minor third, Final Fantasy VII. And then back. But it's not just the tritone here. What's the really important part about the boss theme here to understand is this one, two, three. And any combination thereof. Yeah, we hear that uh, from the from the uh, pig fellows. But we also have. Any one of these options we've heard so far throughout all the reactions I've done, oh, well, we've done really, together, that show a boss theme. One, two, flat three. All day is boss theme. It's boss theme country. If I drop this down, it'll sound a little bit more foreboding. And there you go. One, two, flat three equals boss at B. So let's check out Time Gear. Speaking of Time Gear, do you see the new Assassin's Creed? And there's like the Sands of Time thing, and you can be like Prince of Persia. Oh, <gasps> so cool. Stacked fifths. Stacked fifths again. cool song. Oh, I've got so much to say here. Alright, I'm going to talk you through this time. So as we loop here, I'm going to break this down for you. Now the first thing for you to understand as we go through is that these are stacked fifths. So what we have here is from A to E. So we owe A, B, C, D, E. That's five. So that's a stacked fifth. And then from E, we're going to count up five. Now in the musical alphabet, after G, we don't go to H. We go back to A. So we go E, F, G, A, B. So we have E to B. So we have A, E, B. And those are stacked fifths. Now you can hear. Uh, that's like from Message in a Bottle, stacked fifths. Now, what's, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tell you what the chord progression is. So we're actually going to think about... This entire song is being in the key of E minor, which is really fun and really cool. Or at least we're going to end up in E minor. So I'm going to call out the representations of the chords in terms of number form. So E would be 1, F sharp would be 2, G is going to be 3, A is going to be 4, B is going to be 5, C is going to be 6, D is going to be 7, C technically flat 6, D technically flat 7, G technically flat 3. And I'm going to call out the numbers for you so you can get a feel of how this chord progression is structured. And keep in mind, pretty much all these chords, they're stacked fifths. So what we're really looking at is the stacked fifths moving around. Oh, that sounded cool. Ah, oh, it's 
Sounds so cool. Okay, let's get it going. So A, so four. Flat three. Stacked fifths. Four. Three, flat three. Flat two. One. Flat two. One. Get stacked fits. And the really cool thing about that, this flat two, to then the one is that the one has an F sharp in it, and the flat two is an F natural. So here's F natural as the root, and then the one has an F sharp in it. Very interesting. Flip back and forth. Flat six. Flat seven. Flat six. So cool. Love that chord progression. I love the stacked fifths. That is absolutely delightful. Let's check out Through the Sea of Time. I'm actually taking parts of the music we just heard. about the sex being the key of A, A minor, so we have flat six being the F. Okay, yeah, so, okay, this is really cool. So it goes F, G, to D sus4, D, back to F, G, D sus, A minor. Whoa, is that a cool chord progression or what? Talk to it one more time. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, F major seven, E minor. F major 7. Yeah, okay. F major 7. F major 7. E minor. G. G. 
F to G, to D sus4, to D major, F, E minor, D sus4, A minor. Now what's interesting is how this Through the Sea of Time connects to time gear. So we just heard time gear and there's elements of time gear that are showing up through the Sea of Time. For example, this F major 7 to E minor, we heard this before as it as an F with stacked fifths to an E minor stacked fifths. Now in C of time, we're hearing an F major 7 to an E minor. And indeed, maybe I was thinking about time gear wrong, and we could really think about that as being in the key of A minor, even though at the end, it was going C, D, C, D, because it did not return to E. <coughs> Excuse me. It went to A minor. So really, I think I'm actually going to take back what I said about time gear, and I'm going to say time gear is in the key of A minor, as is through the C of time. And I'll tell you why. It's because when we do this C, D, C, D thing, yeah, these are both chords that, while they're power chords, are not defining what quality they are, so technically they could be both from E minor or indeed from A minor. And at the end of time gear, after the D, we did not in fact go to E, we went to A minor. And so, yeah, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and take back what I said about it being in the key of E minor and say it's in fact in the key of A minor, as is through the C of time. Very interesting and also interesting connections to see those chords and parts of chord progressions being taken and borrowed between both songs, creating indeed a feeling of connection. And I'm assuming that connection has something to do with, well, time. That's based on the titles of the song. So let's check out In the Hands of Fate. So, in the hands of fate, this is also pulling a lot of the ideas from Through the Sea of Time and Time Gear into a third piece of music. So, chat, I'd love to know what's the connection between Time Gear, Through the Sea of Time, and In the Hands of Fate, because musically, they all seem to be, well, relatively strongly related. While you're typing, let's check out Temporal Power. Temporal Tower, excuse me. Power of Power. It's a refrain of sorts. And again, the key of A. Again, doing a CD thing, just like we heard in Time Gear. Just like we heard in Time Gear. Just pulling parts of Time Gear.
So again, mixing and matching, taking ideas we've heard so far throughout this whole arc we've just been on, starting with Time Gear, Through the Seas of Time, Hands of Fate, Temporal Tower. These are all connected. It feels like one part of a story. And indeed, I have a feeling we're going to hear this continue in the next two songs. So the next two songs are called Temporal Spire and Temporal Pinnacle. So let's check out both of these. Yes, going back and forth now between the E and the F. We heard this all the way back at what? Temporal clock. Like, I mean, like, way back. We've heard this. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. We heard this in Time Gear. Again, we're barred the same exact chords that we heard in Time Gear. Same exact ones. This is so cool. So C to D. Stacked bits again. This time really using E as the home base instead of A. As I suspected it was, all the way back when this arc started in Time Gear.
Wow. Let's go straight into Temple Pentacle because it's all connected. Same chords. Same chords. Show me the F. Show me the F. <gasps> Not an F. four seven chords it's like b7 sus4 which works if you put e in the bass i'd like to call this f sharp seven sus4 or maybe indeed it's c sharp seven sus4 assuming i would just call it f sharp sus4 We might, we might very well call this an ESUS 4. Okay, so here's what's really cool. Let, let's sort of summarize the arc that just happened here before we go down a dark path. So we just went from, let's see, time gear through through the sea of time, through in the hands of fate, through temporal tower, through temporal spiral, through temporal pinnacle. These were all connected musically. Now, what was really interesting is Temporal Pinnacle, I was like, all right, it's starting, it sounds kind of like what's happened before. It sounds kind of like we could think of an E as being in the bass here, but no, indeed. It was like this sound right here to this sound right here, and this sound right here, we'd call this a B7 sus4 to a C sharp sus4. And indeed, even if we put the, the E in the bass and then F sharp in the bass, it's just an inversion here. I'd like to think of putting it that way. It'd make me feel safe and secure. But hey, look. A fundamental shift, but still keeping the idea that we heard throughout this entire arc up to the very end. And perhaps this very end, it was short. The temporal pinnacle was short. There was not a lot going on. Maybe it was just like a corridor. Maybe you're exiting something. And now we're going to go down a dark path. So what we heard in Temporal Pinnacle was a shift, indeed perhaps a transition from this little mini arc we just experienced into the next phase. Super cool. Let's check out Down a Dark Path. Oh, def definitely dark. Definitely a dark path. So this starts off. It starts off with a G major. Which seems very innocent and carefree. And then all of a sudden it becomes a G augmented. So it starts G. And as we know, augmented chords are mystery. So it starts out not very mysterious then. Oh, then it gets a little mysterious then. It gets a little James Bondy kind of. Back to the mystery. Oh. Oh, I, I messed up where I was thinking the uh, half steps were. Excuse me. Now we're in like. 
C sees the root here. It's like C tritone. Uh, C minor major seven. Right, so very dissonant. So essentially it's like this to this. Oh! So if I got that second chord right, hang on. C minor major seven. Oh my goodness gracious me. It's like a tongue twister of a chord to play. Okay. Yeah, like a flat five. Yeah, very much a flat five. So it starts off C minor major seven. Which is one of the most mysterious chords out there. Ooh. Ooh. A mysterioso. Mucho mysterioso. And then lots and lots of, well, dissonance. Leading to what I expect to be exciting, Dialga's fight. To the finish. Oh my goodness. Taking inspiration from the time thing here. It's like C to A to B.
So I think what's interesting to me is that this does not sound like the most threatening boss theme that we've ever heard on this channel. Like, not by a long shot. In fact, if you told me this was like an Adventure Time or a mid-boss, I'd believe you. You tell me this is the final boss, it doesn't sound very threatening. Which, is, by the way, is not a criticism, it's just an observation. That, like, think about, like, Sephiroth from, like, Final Fantasy VII. Like, that was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's boss time. This doesn't necessarily feel boss-like, but I will say what's interesting is you could hear elements taken from this entire time arc here. Time gear. We're hearing elements showing up here. Dialga's fight to the finish, which is interesting because the next piece is called Time Restored. So I'm very, very, very curious to head on to this and see what happens when time gets restored. <laughs> Ah, so the first chord we heard of the uh, walking down the dark path was a G major. Also the first chord of this. Time is still showing up, showing up here. Think about being in the key of G major. G, down to flat seven, which is F. Or maybe we be in the key of E minor the whole time. Because now we're doing this E minor to F major thing that we've heard all the way back to Cure of Time. Wild connections. This is so cool. Also plot here at the end that was hold on sec. Well up up a minor third again, Final Fantasy VII reference there. I'm not saying every time anyone has ever gone up by a minor third, it's the same as Nobu Uematsu. My goodness, that Final Fantasy VII OST sure went up and down by a minor third a whole lot, so that's why I'm calling back to it. So right there, so it went B flat to A major to D7 to G7. I don't really know where that's going. Uh, yeah, bringing us back to G eventually. What an interesting piece of music. Time restored indeed. But it's not over yet, even though we've had the final boss. We still have some more songs to listen to. So let's check out Don't Ever Forget. Hashtag never forget the Pokemon time thing. Let's check it out.
more. Five and six, leaving up there. Three. What a beautiful piece of music. Now, I actually just broke that down as we went because the chords were relatively straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and jump into Have to Get Home, which is already sounding very similar to Don't Ever Forget. And in fact, it's using the same chords. Same key as Don't Ever Forget. Similar chords. Same sort of feeling, same sort of idea. Let's jump straight into Farther Away. The same exact chord progression so far. As don't ever forget. Different key. So we've heard Don't Ever Forget, Have to Get Home, and Farther Away have all been musical cousins, or indeed even musical siblings, all holding the same sort of idea, telling the same sort of story musically, and indeed, Farther Away, Don't Ever Forget are the same chord progression, just in a different key. Farther Away sounds a little bit higher than Don't Ever Forget, but it's all the same chords in terms of their relationship to each other. Let's check out A Wish for Peace. And this is also, oh gosh, same key as Don't Ever Forget. Ooh, now changing. Oh, oh my gosh. Five of five to five. Thank you. 
four, five, six, five, four, five, six, five of four, four, five, six, five of four, flat three, two, Uh, and then right there, that was a six, six minor major seven, six seven to six minor six was little chromatic walk down. We have talked about this before. And then to four. So what's interesting about this piece of music is that it feels like a fastball down the middle, but then at the end. In this wish for peace, I feel like maybe the composer is saying we haven't quite found peace yet. And indeed, we have two more parts of this OST, so highly likely peace has not been found. But how the composer shows, perhaps, and this is speculation, but uh, I'm confident in this speculation, is that this entire piece of music is not completely straightforward. So everything's in the same key. We have a secondary down leading us to four, sure. But then it goes to flat three. Ooh, that's like a little bit of tension. That's like there's still some adventure. There's still something to do to two. And then from the two, it goes to And I don't know, there's something about this that indeed feels like a wish for peace, but maybe peace is not here yet. Ah, a piece was found at a cost. Yes. Yes, indeed. The music is also saying that, too. Yes. Well, I mean, you know the story. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so it looks like we get our memories back, so let's check out Memories Returned here. Again, stacked fits. Oh. Sorry, I just played over the music. I'm gonna start that over again. I thought I had it, and I didn't have it. I thought I was predicting. I thought I, I thought I could see the future of what was about to happen next. Turns out I can't see the future, as you know is reasonable. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just not play this time and start it over.
Alright, so it's looping now, so I'm actually gonna talk about this a little bit, because there's, there's some really cool things that happen in this. So, what's happening at the beginning is really cool. This is a really interesting uh, musical tool to use. And so I'm going to break down the principle of what's happening here, playing a little bit of what's from the song to explain. So what's happening is essentially we have one chord sitting on top, and this chord is not going to change, but all the notes underneath it are going to change. So it's kind of like a reverse melody. Because normally we think about the melody being high up so we can hear it and all the chords in the accompaniment being low down. But in this case, the chord's gonna stay the same up top, but the bass note is gonna change. So this sound is what you're gonna hear on top. And on the bottom, the top part stays the same. part is staying the same, but the bottom changes. Type of one. Type of one, if you can hear how the top part stays the same, and only the bottom is changing. Type it to if you could not hear it, because there's quite a few of you here. If you could not hear it, let me know, and I'll explain it to you a different way. Type it to, you're going, Dan, words are coming out of your mouth, but all I hear is vegetable soup. Okay. Well, we're just going to move forward in that case. Let's check out ending theme intro. So setting us up, this ending theme intro is setting us up to be in the key of F major. Very interested to hear what happens in the actual ending theme. Let's check it out.
Yo. Okay. Here's what's wild. What's wild is that ending theme intro sets us up to be in the key of F major. Now, I'm going through the ending theme wondering, what is going on? I'm not hearing any F major. In fact, it feels like it starts in G. In the very last seconds of the ending intro, guess what happens? Yeah, let's hear what, see what it sounds like after it loops. It does the same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it just loops. So what happens is at the end of the loop, so essentially you can think of that as being at the end of the music of ending theme, guess where it ends up, chat? Guess where it ends up? It ends up in F. That's like some meta stuff, man. So it's like, I'm going to play you an intro where it's going to say we're going to F. Then I'm going to play a whole song, and only at the very end of that song will I actually give you a resolution. So in fact, that entire song, so it was like resolution, tension, resolution, which is really, really cool on, on this meta level, where you, your ears are set up expecting F, nothing to do with F, F, right at the very, very, very end. So cool. So, so cool. Let's check this section out. This is called Epilogue Theme. Well, that was an interesting piece. Let's go back and listen to that one more time. And that threw me. actually throw me for a loop here. Looks like D flat, A flat, D flat, B flat. Is that ending chord? My goodness. That was an E flat. No. Oh, my poor ears. Get it, Dan. Come on now. Right. So it ends on A flat. Right. Okay. And then kind of this A-flat stacked fifths thing at the end. Oh my gosh. I totally thought we were in a different key, and I was like thinking absolutely the wrong things. Okay, but we found it. That was so cool. I want to say it's been so cool to figure out different ways in which I can get myself to focus for like five hours straight. It's like, okay, how do I get that dopamine? Like, is it ketones? Is it diet? Is it protein? If I jump in a cold plunge, like what's it going to do? And just being able to figure out ways to get myself to rock and roll and do this is so cool because, well, it's a lot of work. Might not seem like a lot of work, but having to focus on the music like hard enough to be able to figure it out and then break it down and woo, there's a lot going on. So I'm super, super grateful for this opportunity and ready to rock and roll. Let's start with Mystifying Forest. Let's do this thing. Seems like we've been starting with a forest the past two times. Let's keep it going with the forest. And the past three times we've been starting with a forest.
Okay, so I'll talk over this now. So it's C major to C minor, which is pretty interesting. So we're actually alternating back and forth between C major and C minor. C minor now. C major. C minor. C major. C minor. C minor. Right there was very interesting. It was the E flat minor to the E major seven back to E flat minor. We heard that same relationship between two chords all the way back in that sort of time arc. So maybe this is actually calling back a little bit to that time arc there. Now back to the beginning. So very interesting chord progression. And mystifying, yes, not quite as mysterious as things we've heard up to this point, but mysterious indeed. <laughs> well, hey there, buddy. How's it going? Hi, neighbor. <laughs> what this feels like. Part right there. It's like we heard that. What was it? The clay fairy? No, it wasn't the clay fairy. It was the wiggly tough. The wiggly tough workshop. <laughs> I love remembering Pokemon names. I looked at my girlfriend today. I was like, "You look like if an Eevee evolved into a, it was, what was it? It was something about being a Vaporeon." I was not telling her she looked like a Vaporeon. To, to be clear, I'm I'm butchering this story from the from the start. So you have Vaporeon. And then I was like, what was the fire one? She's like, Flareon. I was like, yes, that's right, Flareon. And then I was like, oh, and then the Electron was Jolteon. And then she looks at me and she goes, and there were the dark shadow evolutions. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Dark evolutions of Eevee? I, uh, man, I didn't know about that. But my goodness, I will tell you that the day, oh, the day Nintendo puts one of those Pokemon games on the Switch, the original ones, not the new open world, like, Love open world ones. Love Pokemon. Give me my tried and true. I will. I will. Uh, you may not see me for a week or two. Umbreon. Wow, like Shadow. Okay. Umbreon. Kil Kilgore in the house. Bringing in the deep cut. Umbreon. Wow. Wow. Oh, gosh, I love Pokemon. And I love Nintendo. Oh, so good. <sighs> All right, let's check out Shaman Village. So 
one and four, both major. Oh, what? Dominant. Oh, four minor. Oh. Oh my goodness. T7 the first time it didn't sound right. So the point that I want to make here on this song is the way in which one and four are navigated because this is so cool. We've heard so many different versions of one going to four throughout this soundtrack. It seems as if the composer is making an artistic and creative exercise out of the different ways of navigating between chord one and chord four. So what we heard here the first time through was one major. And now the second time it happens, it's one. One major seven. One dominant seven. One six. You can play like this, I suppose, if you wanted to. And then four minor, but four minor is really not four minor anymore. Now it's actually going to be the two of flat three. And then we go five. One to G. And so that right there is so cool to see this, to see either the composers or the composer use this idea of the one chord to the four chord. And it's like, how many different ways can you bring the one chord to the four chord? And I will tell you, I have never in my life heard the way we heard just now, which was one major, four major, then one walk down chromatically to that. Well, the one six, then go to four minor, but really the four minor is not really a four minor, it's really the two of the five, flat three, to bring us to flat three. So cool, so cool, and what an incredible insight and exercise in creativity that we get to witness as part of this soundtrack. Let's check out Sky Peak Forest. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, someone cheer some bits to get a metal cover of this. Put some bits in the chat for a metal cover. One bit in the chat for a metal cover. Let's get this. One bit. That I, as far as I can take it, where it really starts to fall apart. baby one to four Thank you. 
าพี่ฟาดไอ้ so really we ended up in C but it really felt like G at the beginning and then indeed it went two five one to C and then we did this whole thing which we've heard for the past well this part four which is proven to be very common so far it's just That type of a thing where we're walking down a scale to one, and so I think we could think about that song as having changed keys. Indeed, really starts off feeling like this G to C type thing, G C, uh, and then goes to the F, and then two, five, one. Very interesting piece of music, and is throwing me in terms of. Telling you what the key is, just kind of like the time one, the first one in the time arc we listened to. With them, I was like, "Oh, maybe it's C minor. Oh, no, it's A minor." It's like, "Oh, maybe it's C minor. Oh, no, it's C major." It's actually the same relative keys that threw me for a loop the first time because A minor is actually related to C major. It's the relative minor, and G major is actually related to E minor. It's the relative major. So we actually have that same connection there. So we can actually think about what we just heard as being perhaps. An inversion of sorts, a majorized version. So Sky Peak Coast is actually like a major version of that whole time thing we just came out of, which is really interesting. Okay, let's check out this next one, which is oh, that was Sky Peak Prairie. Excuse me, this is Sky Peak Coast. Yeah, come on, drummer. Okay, so I'll actually talk about that a little bit. I'm having a lot of fun playing. Okay, so Sky Peak Coast pretty interesting, uh, very different from Sky Peak Prairie. Now, Sky Peak Prairie felt very open and happy. Sky Peak Coast felt a little threatening. In fact, I would wager that perhaps there was mm, maybe some rain, maybe clouds. Indeed, Sky Peak Coast. Like, well, Dan, it rains. Oftentimes by the seaside. So yes, I know. But based on the music, it sounds like clouds and rain. 
Thunderbolts and lightning. Very, very frightening me, Galileo. Let's check out Snipe Sky Peak Snowfield. My goodness, there is a very diverse uh, biome situation going on here. We went from a dungeon to a prairie to the coast to the snowfield. Step from the prairie to the coast to the snowfield, and I do believe that we rely on. really cool about this this relationship here between the G sharp minor and the A flat major 7 is the same relationship as we heard all the way back in that time arc I'm just gonna call it the time arc you're gonna know what I mean it's when we're talking about the time gears and the time things and the pinnacles and the peaks and the valleys and the hills are alive with the sound of timey wine and so what we have is a major seven chord and then a half step down a minor chord it's cool it's like a phrygian sound type thing we think about the minor chord as being the one but that same relationship we've heard now in a couple songs so far in this here part four and also in that there part three very interesting very cool Down to minor third, those of you who are playing Final Fantasy VII Bingo. E major. With a. With also E, 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 e augmented in there, just a scotch of it. I'm going out to a D. D sharp 11. C sharp minor. back home. A fascinating, fascinating, I tell you, fascinating piece of music. Man, I should do more cold plunges before we do these reactions, because I tell you, I like feel on top of the world. On top of the world. Dopamine is running hot, and I'm ready to go. This is called Sky Peak Final Pass. Let's check it out.
a second there. We had the same exact chords in E minor, F major 7. Same chords as the time mark. Now we're on D minor. Okay, so let's talk about that just a little bit. Real interesting piece of music, you know, from the... And then... Uh, really interesting because the first time through, think about it. That's got an F natural in it. The second time we go through, it has an F sharp in it. And it's very interesting to see that difference between the F natural here and the F sharp up here. Because when I play them together, they sure don't sound good. And so that's why, well, they may sound good too. Good is subjective, good is subjective. This might sound good to you, this might sound good to you, hey, hey, this might sound good to you, and this might sound good to you. Sing it with me, this might sound good to you, and this might sound good to you, hey, hey, this might sound good to you, and this might sound good to you. If I say something's good or bad, please understand that I am in a momentary lapse of teacherly judgment putting my own thoughts and feelings onto your experience. And I'm sorry. You should make up your own mind about what sounds good and what doesn't sound good. And then you should learn all the rules of music theory to give you a framework within which to operate and think about what sounds good and doesn't sound good. And then do whatever you want to do. That's what I think. So the reason why there's such a fundamental shift is because we switch between using these two notes. You see how different they are. And so that results in a fundamental shift in the music when we use one and not the other because they're so different. Okay, this next one is called Blizzard Island Rescue Team Medley. Someone's running a vacuum somewhere. I can hear it. You probably can't. Let's go. Oh, 
medley it is. Do it with me. Oh, I thought they were going to do it again. Oh, yes, please. Ah. Ah. Jump, jump, everybody, everybody in the building, let's go. Jump, 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 jump. I don't see you jumping. Topeka, jump on it, jump on it, jump on it. Okay, now it's just looping. Well, that was a fun medley. I surely did enjoy that medley. There were some connections between the medleys. There was chromaticisms that were going on in a lot of the medleys. What's a chromaticism, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Chromaticism is when you have a bunch of notes that are right next to each other, all in a row. They could be going from low to high, they could be going from high to low. Or back and forth, really. So chromaticisms, you can see there's these little metal bars on my guitar, and each one of these is a note. So if I put my finger here, that's this note, this note, this note, this note. And these four notes in a row, that's a chromaticism. As is going down, Chromaticism. 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 Oh, chromaticism. Let's see if I can do this. Chromaticism. 
Oh, chromaticism. Let's go, chromaticism. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. Alright, groove's not 100%, but that's okay. We'll make do. Groove is not tight. <laughs> Chromaticism. 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 It's a chromaticism song. Jump on it, 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 jump on it. Let's go now, here we go now, here we go now, here we here we here we go now, here we go now, here we go now, here we go here here we go now, here we go now. What? Chromaticism time. 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 Hey. Okay. So, chromaticism. Len 10 craft, it had to get that crazy for you to say something, huh? <laughs> ah, it's like you watch like something going down in public. You're like, at what point do I say something? <laughs> Apparently it had to get to crazy eight out of ten. Len 10 craft was like, alright. <laughs> it's time. I must speak. I must speak. I'm morally obliged. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay. Let's keep it going. Surrounded sea. I mean, that was an interesting exploration of chromaticism. Let's do it. Surrounded sea.
we're going up by whole steps, taking minor triad up by whole steps. Still whole steps. So that's really interesting. Going up by whole steps is taking one minor chord, this. And so this whole song goes like this, essentially. You know, it goes back and forth a couple times between a couple of them, but this is basically the way it's going. So we're all the way from A minor down here to A minor up here, and just going up by whole steps with minor tr Who does that? I don't know. These guys do. How cool is that? Harry Dum 77 asks, have you listened to Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom soundtrack yet? I have not. I did not listen to it. It's nonsense. I did not listen. I did not. Oh. Hi, Mark. Interesting, what interesting chord progressions. <laughs> like, Alright, I'm gonna break this down as it's about to loop. Like what? So basically, C7 sharp 11. So C sharp eleven. To B major. To C minor. G major seven. Like what? Like what? That's why it sounds super cool. Never thought, of, like, my mind is being expanded. Let's <laughs> be like, Rest Music Coach, my name is Dan, and you're about to watch my mind and Musical Horizons get expanded by reacting to video game music, because that's 100% what's happening right here. You think you're learning stuff. Psh, I'm learning stuff, too. Let's check out Aegeus Cave. Oh yeah, let me get my power cords out. Oh, I figured out. I don't know, it's doing up different stuff too. when I think I can break the future on this. It's like, no. No, Dan, you can't see the future.
close. So again, what we're seeing here, we just talked about a whole song that was a minor chord that went up by whole steps. Now we just heard here was a B minor, B minor chord, essentially. If we could sum up everything that's happening in music. Going up a whole step to a C minor. This is the C minor here. So B flat to C minor. Back to C, uh, B flat minor. C minor. And then right there, it's C minor, D flat major, C minor, to B flat minor, back and forth. So cool it is. Let's check out Defy the Legend. Z. Defy the Legend. Z. You guys like Quincy Jones stuff. Love it. Now I lost it, but I'll talk about it a little bit in a second. So, a lot of interesting things happening here, especially in the first half of, uh, gosh, A, C, D, E flat, F, which makes you think you're going to G, but you don't, you go back to A, well, yeah. 
Yeah, kind of a G with an A in the bass. A funky, a funky chord for show. Take care, D. Bradwell. Okay, let's check out Concealed Ruins. Oh, this is the same riff we heard two songs ago. Let's get that riff. If I dare. Well, I'll take it up and not to have that. All right, got it. Let's jam this thing. <laughs> ah! One more time. Uh, if only I can remember how a blues scale works, I'll be fine. Thank goodness. Oh, well, now it changed. Well, what a cool riff is that? Oh my goodness. Ah. Uh. There we go. Love it. Super cool. Let's check out this next van, which is Mount Travail.
almost like arpeggiating a C sharp sus4 chord. You know. Then the chord is sus. You know, I haven't explained this in a while, so I think I'll explain this again today. You know how a sus chord works? A suspended chord. A suspended chord, by the way, if you have questions about the music, please feel free to pop some in the chat, and I will answer your questions. So, a C sus4 chord. How does sus4 work? Well, we can think about music with numbers and letters, and that's how we make sense of music at the most fundamental basic level. Numbers, letters. So we can think about this note as being one. A note, by the way, is a sound. So this sound right here, this is a note. Not every sound is a note, but these particular sounds, all the sounds that come out of my guitar are notes, for the most part. Note, 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 for a major chord, we take one, three, and five. We play them together at the same time. One, three, five, together at the same time. Sounds like that. Relatively pleasing. Now, what we do for a sus four chord is we take three, and we move it up to four. So instead of one, three, five, we have one, four, five. And that's a sus four chord. We have one, four, and five. So there's no three in the chord. There's only ones, fours, and fives. Okay, let's check out this next one called In the Nightmare. Very augmented. This is sharp eleven here. Ah. Some I'll talk about it as we go through. It's like a C sharp major to now, like a C augmented, back to a C sharp, sharp eleven. C major with augmented. Back and forth. And so what we're seeing so far in this chapter, in this here, chapter two, uh, four, excuse me, is that there's a lot of going back and forth between two chords that, well, we might not normally associate together, but are being put together to, with fantastic effect to create new and different sounds that we are not entirely used to hearing. So let's check out this next one called Palkia's Onslaught. That's not a boss theme. I don't know what's going to be.
Okay, now it's looping. So what I want to point out to you is one of the key features of this boss theme here was... Which is the first three notes of the boss theme we heard before. That... Is the same as... It starts in a different place, but it's the same relationship between all the notes. You can actually see it geometrically on my guitar. So we start on one, we skip one, then we go up one. Skip one, one, skip one. Here, same thing. Skip one, skip one. And so the theory of many boss themes using one, two, and flat three has been confirmed by yet another, I'm not sure if this is a boss theme, I suspect it is a boss theme. Number one, because it uses one, two, flat three. Number two, because the title of the song, someone's onslaught, yeah, sounds like a boss fight to me. But right there, you can see very clearly the boss theme is using the one, two, flat three. We hear this so many times and it's so cool to hear this one little idea that transcends video game, transcends video game genre and shows up in all sorts of boss fights. Let's check out the next one called Dark Curator. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's making this sound the way it is. Now, we heard some of this type of sound, this type of emotion being evoked way back in either part one or part two, where there was that desert area. And what it is... It's a very interesting thing where you take a major chord and just sliding a major chord up and down by one half step creates this sort of ooh, feeling of sand dunes and heat maybe. Now, in this case, we're not in an area, well, Dark Crater, maybe. It gives this area, this is like mystery, 
mystery, mystery, mystery, mystery, mystery. So we have After Dark Crater, Deep Dark Crater. Let's see if anything changes in Deep Dark Crater. Let's check it out. Ah. Oh, lots of callbacks to Dark Crater. Now this is just like a little creepy and cool. And more, more whole tone being thrown in there on top sounded like. Oh, wild and cool. So we can hear a lot of connections between Dark Crater and Deep Dark Crater. What I'd love to do is jump straight into random dungeon things. I don't think we've heard any random dungeon themes before. I'd love to hear what that sounds like. Let's check it out. <laughs> Augmented. See if I can catch that next time it comes around. Okay, so now we'll catch that in a second. But what's really cool is that in the same way we heard a bunch of minor chords moving up by a whole step a little while ago, we actually hear in this song, moving up by a whole step, are fully diminished seventh chords. And I'll point the part out to you. Okay, now we're going to go up by a whole step. Going up, going up, there we go, up by a whole step, and then coming up, another whole step, and then walks down. And let's see if I can grab this little intro piece here. Oh, it's not going to make this diminish. I don't know what my brain was thinking. 
So what we're seeing, and I don't think this is uncommon for the soundtrack, but I want to look down here. I'm just going to get my guitar into him while I talk, is that there's an idea. To call it a motif would be a stretch, right? Because it's not necessarily a motif unless you want to say, yeah, well, move going up by whole steps is a motif that represents something. But I don't think in this case it is. But there's an idea of taking a chord and keeping the chord exactly the same and just moving it up by whole steps. And we heard that in the past with minor chords. Now we're hearing it here with fully diminished seventh chords. Very interesting tool or technique which to create a feeling of suspension and going somewhere and movement and pushing forward. And I'm very curious to hear if they do this as well in Random Dungeon Theme 2. Let's see if there's a connection. Not much connection yet. Okay, so not really sounding like a dungeon theme, at least to me. But here's a really, really cool connection that we can make. So it starts off with F. Well, it starts off down here. I'm going to play it up here because my guitar only goes so low. Now, in the first eh, half, let's say, my first quarter, of this piece. It makes its way from F down to C. And it makes its way down by whole steps. Instead of going up by whole steps, it makes its way it makes its way down by whole steps. In the second part, it makes its way from F to C by half steps. This is very interesting. So the first time it goes down, it's then down a whole step. Down a whole step. Now the second time, half step, half step, what, half step, what, half step. What an interesting thing, and so we can start to see these tools. Hey, Lavarus. So we can start to see these tools being brought up by the composer or composers to navigate in different ways that are actually inverse. Because previously we heard ascending by whole step. We also heard ascending chromatically. And right there we heard descending by whole step and descending chromatically. So cool. All right, let's check out random dungeon theme three.
down by whole steps. Sell down by whole steps. And then changing. So at the very beginning here, just like we were talking about the, oh gosh, sorry, I keep on hitting the wrong thing. Just like we were talking about the sus4 to sus2 chords, we can hear at the very beginning it's, and what that is, it's essentially a D, do D sus4, to a D, do a D sus2. Now I didn't explain to you what a D sus2 is, but it works the same way as a D sus4. So we take one, two, three, four, five, and we take one, three, five. Now if we play one, four, five, that's a D sus4. Now if we play one, two, five, so again, no three, it's one, two, five, that's a D sus2. So. That's D, D sus4, D, D sus2. Now we heard again here, descending by whole steps. Let's go find that. Well, technically not D sus2, it's actually a C major there. So I apologize for that. So what that really is doing, it's D major, D sus4, D, C major. Layers didn't change. Going down by whole steps and half steps instead of up. So we can see, we can think about the first half so far of this OST was like going up, ascending by half step, ascending by whole step, and now we're thinking descending by whole step, descending by half step. Let's check out Marowak Dojo. Very groovy. Lavers, I'm also having a great time listening to this for the first time. And what a funky thing here. Now, what we can explore here 
And I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull this out for you in real time as we go. Uh, but the idea and the concept that it's come up a couple times as OC, and I haven't pointed it out, but I, I feel compelled to point it out to you now because it's the second or third time it's happened. It's that there's almost like two separate keys going on at the same time. And through those two separate keys interacting together, this quirky playfulness is created. Now, oh, we had that little thing. Yeah. Oh gosh. I wish I could pull this up in real time. I I don't want to sit have you sit here and like watch me try and figure this out. But it's an interesting thing that the playfulness really is a juxtaposition between almost two tonal centers or this mode mixture that's happening here that creates this playful thing and this playful feeling. That being said, let's check out Pelipper Island. Oh, Lavis is honestly, you figuring it out is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Watching me sweat. <laughs> Alright, type a one in the chat if you want me to go back and figure out what was going on. I had one vote. Come on, we, 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 need, we need more than one, guys. I need to know that you are on board with us doing this on this stream. On board. Lurkers, I will not call you out if you want to just type a one. All right, we had two. All right, so let's go back and at least figure out the first part of what was going on here in Marowak Dojo. Like, even right there. So it's like the bass. The bass is really living in E. You know, E major, E minor, it, it's it's something with a seven. And then this right here, it's like, yes, all these notes technically from we could say are from E major, but like, li listen to this. Like the way this all sits against each other is very interesting. And then on top of that, on top of that, there's like On top of that, there's stuff that's not an E. <laughs> it's the point. Lord have mercy. Okay, I think I need like a 10 minute break because I'm getting a little, I'm get, get, getting a little slow to pick these things up with my ears. Normally I am a little bit faster. But the point is, is that there's stuff that's like, you don't normally hear. It's wild. Like really creative stuff, really cool stuff. 
All right, team. Let's rock and roll with sympathy. Here we go. That did not start perfectly. There we go. Okay, so it's like kind of one four here. So this is four. up a minor third, E flat. Same idea, here's the four. The six. Five of five. Two, three, four, five back to C. Beautiful chord progression. Let's check out this next one, which is called Beyond the Dream. Ooh, interesting. Minor thirds again. Down by half steps. In that minor third. Now descending by half steps. Ah, uh, tilting says reminded me of Chrono Trigger. Well, it's actually part of the magic and the appeal and the 
part of the charm of this track here is it's actually detuned a little bit. So it's not actually perfectly in tune with A440. Now I've talked about this before, but for those of you who may not know, there's essentially the way sound works, uh, well, the way we measure sound, is something called Hertz. It was a German fellow whose last name was Hertz who figured this out. And so we, he, I guess we either named it after him or he named it after himself. But either way, the number of Hertz is the number of times a sound wave cycles per second. So a sound wave cycle, it literally looks like an S that's laying, laying down. It's like an S. So the sound wave starts here, it goes up, comes down, and then comes back. And to start here, down and back, that's one cycle. So if it cycles 440 times, that makes an A sound that sounds like this. Now, you can change that. And if you make it an A444, it's like going to be just a little bit different. But it's different enough that you could hear the difference. And so what was happening is in this piece of music, things were detuned a little bit. So beyond the dream, it seems a little dream. Like it seems like there's an, a different state, a different place where all the tunings may not have rules. It's very cool. All right, let's check out Air of Unease. Yeah, can we just listen to Beyond Dream? Okay, here's Air of Unease. Oh, something bad is definitely happening. Well, a lot of tension going on in there, which is what makes it feel uneasy. I would point also to the kind of bizarre, well, bizarre is a strong word, but odd bass pattern. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Unusual, shall we say. Yeah, so you have which has like nothing to do with the Fs. And so it's the juxtaposition of things that really are not very connected that creates a lot of dissonance that gives you the feeling and indeed the air, if you will, of unease. Let's check out Star Cave. Oh, sorry, Lavers. Keep asking me questions. I'll keep an eye on chat now, now that I know you're asking questions. Welcome, Italian. Oh, that syncopation is lovely.
Wow. And so just like, I mean, I'm assuming by Star Cave that there's like, it's shining. It's like shining, shining, sparkling, 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 sparkling. There's many different layers of sparkle because what we can hear in the music is there's many different layers of music. And there's many different layers of things that are happening all on top of each other. It's like melody layer on top of melody layer. And again, I'm using the term melody rather loosely here. We could say single single note no, idea layered on top of single note idea layered on top of single note idea in a way that creates just like when you look at the night sky and you see many layers of stars and they all kind of shine and move back and forth you get the same feeling here listening to this piece of music it's like so, so many layers it's layer on top of layer on top of layer of this scintillating sound oh gosh this is gorgeous Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. It's amazing. It's so it, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Lavras asks, have you done other Pokemon OST reactions? No, this is the first one. So glad you could be here live. Let's check out Deep Star Cave. I wanted the digga digga. That's why I said it. It wasn't actually there. I was wishing upon a star. here in star cave is layer on top of layer is not quite the same as star cave but it's still the same idea it's still connected you know as we've heard throughout this soundtrack through the different layers different dungeons there's elements that stay the same between the music to show the connection between the different layers of the dungeon but it does change because otherwise it would just be the same song over and over again beautiful 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 loved loved it let's check out one for all all for one the Poke Musketeers, apparently. I feel like we're back at the uh, Wiggly Tough workshop here.
So, this is essentially reusing of music we've heard before. We've heard this, I believe, if I am not incorrect. Man, I could be. I could be misremembering, but I don't think I am. It was the Wiggly Tough workshop. There was a store where we heard this type of music as well. We figured out that whenever we hear this music, we're in a space where we're not going to be attacked for the most part. And indeed, hearing it here again is lovely to hearken back to peaceful times before all the Oh, I don't know. Boss fights and things. So let's move out of this uh, safe and sunny land and into a place called the Murky Forest. Let's check it out. Oh, this is great. This entire piece is using a scale called the whole tone scale. And the whole tone scale, well, in addition to the groove of this being just amazing, I'll explain to you what was going on here, is the whole tone scale. Now, the whole tone scale is the same scale we get the augmented chords from. And if you recall the augmented chords, chords we heard this a lot in part one and part two from mysterious places. So there's an element of playfulness that's brought in here, the way in which the groove is great. It's like um chiki um chi um chiki um pa chiki um chiki um chi um chiki um pa chi, but augmented, but using the whole tone scale. And so you could hear the notes that I was playing on my guitar agreed with the music because I was playing augmented chord notes and notes from this augmented scale, or indeed the whole tone scale. So murky forest. Not very threatening, more sort of quirky in terms of the music. Let's have a fun exploration. Oh, well, we've heard this before. It's 1 4, by the way. Yeah, so this is pulling from one of the main themes you've been hearing throughout this entire OST. It's like fun. This might, might be the main theme it's playing around with uh, that we we just heard. Now, one thing I want to point out to was really cool was this movement. Hmm. 
Huh. Which is really interesting. I'll pull it back a little bit. Two. And this, right here. It's like, two fully diminished. Or indeed... Seven fully diminished, really, we could think about it. Let's bring us back to one. Uh, but the way it's, the way it's voiced. It's very interesting, so we start with four. And then we go to a four, you know, with a three in the bass. Two, implying seven fully diminished here. Back to one. A delightful little way of playing around with two notes at a time to create so much feeling, so much emotion, so much movement. Let's check out Fortune Ravine. Heck yeah. Love it. Listen to the drums. With the horns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Ah, oh, gosh, I love it. Man, the groove. Okay, so my favorite part of this was easily the rhythms, like the drums. Yeah, duck a cook up. Duck a cook up. Duck a cook up. Buck up. Duck a cook up. Oh gosh, I love it. Oh my gosh, the groove is awesome. Awesome. Love it.
Okay, so it's like E sharp nine, E seven sharp nine. F seven sharp nine. Back to E seven sharp nine. G seven sharp nine. F7 sharp 9. E7 sharp 9. And so going back and forth between these sharp 9 chords, I mean, it's a stark contrast compared to Fortune. Fortune Ravine was like good old groove time, and now we're in Fortune Ravine depths, and it's like sh 7 sharp 9 chords jumping around everywhere. It's like scary. I feel like think something's going to jump out of a closet in a ravine. I don't know how the closet made it into the ravine, but there is a closet in the ravine, and the light in the room doesn't work, and I can't turn the light on, and there's something in the closet. Hey, <laughs> you grooving with me? By the way, shout out and a thank you to both Lavarus and Hydru7, who are now both subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to have you. Let's keep this thing going with It Can't Be. I want to play a little bit, so I'm going to pull this one back and I'm going to jam over it for a minute. So what was happening there was essentially just a G major 7 and a B minor 7. Back and forth, just like that. This one is called Defend Globe. You've heard of an attack dog. Now you can go to the store and buy yourself a Defend Globe. Yes. It looks like an ordinary atlas of the earth, indeed a globe. But if an intruder walks into your room, it starts squawking. It's a defend globe.
sharp minor. C sharp minor. B minor seven. And that's what's happening in the first part of that piece of music. Melancholy, yes, which is interesting to me because it says defend the globe, and I thought we saved the world already in the song. So I'm wondering why it's so melancholy and so, mm, yeah, not just like happy. Well, I don't know what this says about the game, but the next one's called defend globe ending. So let's check this out now. getting to A. <laughs> Same chord progression as before. Two five one to six, or two to six, five six one to six. So same chord progression, different sound, even more melancholy, even more, well, tristesse, I would say. Italian says, uh, so Exception says, this piece plays during a very bittersweet ending, one of the game's special episodes. Yeah, it sounds bittersweet. Italian says, defend globe is the treasure you find at the end in one of the special episodes, and these special episodes are different disconnected stories, so they have their own endings. Got it. Okay, but it's a bittersweet ending, so that makes sense. Let's check out Spring Cave. Oh, yes, please. Oh, we're going to get springy in this cave.
So it's, these are augmented. Oh yeah, come on, Groot. That sounded like that sound we just heard right there. Hold on. Hold the phone. Everyone stop everything. It's about to loop anyway. Look. Isn't that from Mario Kart? Listen. Listen, listen, listen. This right here. Is that sound not in Mario Kart? Type a two. If you've heard that sound in Mario Kart. Like, hang on a second, I've heard that before. Uh, what do I mean by augmented? So I mean we take a chord and, and instead of one, three, and five, we one, three, and five, and five's a little bit higher. So one, three, five, one, three, five's a little bit higher. And we looked in part one through three, there was a lot of augmented chords showing up, making things feel mysterious. But now when augmented chords are showing up, they're not necessarily making things feel mysterious, they're more sort of like playful and a little funky. But if you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the comments if you have heard that sound in Mario Kart before, because my goodness, that does sound familiar. Let's check out Lower Spring Cave. That bass sound is sick too. Again, I'm telling you. I am telling you. What video game have I heard that in before? Uh, I'm not going to think of it off the top of my head, but wow. Someone listening to that is going to know exactly what we're talking about. They're like, yes, Dan, I know. Please, let me know in the comments if you're watching it on YouTube. Oh, so cool. So let's talk about just those little... 
So what's happening there? It's moving up by a minor third. So up by a minor third. And then the chord changes and we start, we go up a half step for the whole thing. Up by a minor third. And so on. But a fun little tidbit there of what's going on in that sort of violin part. So that was a lower spring cave. Now we're going to go all the way in. This is called the spring cave depths. Let's check it out. Ha! And we have that. Okay, so let's loop it now. So I think what's interesting to note is that both spring caves and spring cave depths, let me make sure I got the name right for the first one, lower spring cave, excuse me, both lower spring cave and spring cave depths, they share a relationship in the same sense that we talked about before, we take the same chords and move them higher or lower. In the case of lower spring cave, the chords are much higher. In spring cave depths, they're much lower and indeed, that sort of literally music paints the idea of, it's like, oh, we're walking up some stairs. Here's the sound of someone walking up some stairs. That's like someone walking upstairs. You literally hear the music get higher. And now someone walking down the stairs. Walking down the stairs. And so we can think about, there's sort of two ways of going about creating an idea with music and representing an idea with music. One is to be literal, as literal as possible. It's like we're going down to the depths, we play lower. We're going up to the pinnacle, we go higher. 
right? That's first. The second way is you be a little bit more metaphorical with the music, and you don't literally do exactly what the title of the song says. But in this case, it really fits. Taking the song significantly lower, indeed one sixth lower. Well, a major third lower. I was thinking up. Yeah, so a major third lower. And wow, it does indeed sound lower and does indeed make you feel like you are in the depths. Yeah, Hydru says, small thing, but I noticed over the course of the few checks, they slow down. Yes, correct. And indeed to becoming lower, they've also slowed down. Great job noticing that, Hydru. And thanks for bringing that up. Yep, slowing down, almost like the air is getting heavy or you're getting tired from walking all the way down there. Let's check out Here Comes Team Charm. Well, that was funky. I don't know who brought a saxophone to the jungle, but I like it. Donkey Kong music so much. Is anything gonna happen? Is there gonna be a melody? If there ain't no melody, I'm gonna play. Okay, well, that was the Southern Jungle. Little introduction. Let's see if we get a little bit further. I know, this is Boulder Quarry. I really want to play this for you.
<laughs> Love that. Hey, let's put some distortion on it. Let's do it one more time with a little, with a little, uh, little umph, shall we? Little umph. One time. I might explain that second or wrong. But anyway, that's a lot of fun. What a cool riff. By the way, the very, very yeses have it. So we're going to go ahead and finish this OST today. Let's check out Illusion Stone Chamber. Hey, Zelda Lucas. So let's talk about what makes this feel sort of illusiony. Right, illusion stone chamber. Maybe I'm too little, but maybe I'm not. Hang on, I think I'll take a pause. Because I'm. All right, got it. So it's a pretty interesting part if we think about it. So it starts off this mysterious feeling. Feels almost like it's gonna head in this whole tone augmented direction. But then no, it moves so, it moves from this uh, major third, major third, yes, to a, a perfect fourth. Sorry, my brain's moving a little slow. We've only been live for Four hours and 49 minutes. So, if I'm a little slow on the draw, I apologize, but I'm here. So, a major third to perfect fourth. Yeah, it sounds disorienting, doesn't it? Good word, Hydru. My goodness, we're making. We're, we're, Hydru, <laughs> welcome to the team. You're helping me out here today. I love it. Okay, Limestone Cavern. Let's check it out. So that started out with an augmented sort of arpeggio right there, which is really cool.
Ooh. Whoa! That was wild. Oh, come on, drums. This also sounds disorienting. So, sorry, I just clicked a weird thing and all my script, there we go, okay. This is what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna say anything about this one. Let's check out Deep Lime, cause this was Limestone Cavern. Let's check out Deep Limestone Cavern and then I'm gonna compare and contrast the two. Oh, slower, octave down, same idea. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so we're looping here. So, Hydru7 asks, what's that shaky sound? It feels like it's moving from ear to ear. Well, it sounds to me like brushes on a snare drum, but knowing VSTs, it could be anything. It could be any type of shaker. But it also sounds like footsteps in sand like video game effects. Like if you've ever been walking over sand in a video game, sometimes it sounds like that. So it might also be representing that there's sand on the floor and someone's walking in the deep limestone cavern on top of limestone sand. That is also possible. And possibly probable. Potentially possibly probable. Perhaps it's potentially possibly probable. The portent's prophecy is potentially possibly probable. Yeah, let's go.
Flat six. Flat seven. One. Flat six. Flat seven. One. Flat six, flat seven, one. Love it. Flat six, flat seven, one. Excellent. So basically one, hanging out on one the whole time, and then a flat six, a flat seven, and a one. All right, team, let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Here we are, part six of the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky original soundtrack. We've got a couple tunes here to go. We're starting with For a New Life. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
Ah. Hands are getting tired. Okay. That's beautiful. A beautiful piece. I'm sorry I ruined it with some not super tasteful playing. I have now learned my lesson. I will not do that again. So what we had here was a chord built out, a uh, chord progression, excuse me, built out of three chords. That would be C major, D major, and E minor. We think about E minor as being one, C as being flat six, D as being flat seven. Let's check out the Barren Valley. One, four. Ah, well, not anymore. All right, so type a two in the chat if you hear Barren Valley here. Type a one in the chat if you hear a happy road trip. Type a one for happy road trip. Type a two for Barren Valley. Lurkers, I will not call you out. If I see a first time chatter, I will not call you out. Unless you want to be called out. But anyway, type a one for happy road trip. Type a two for Barren Valley. Oh, did I now switch it? I'm sorry, it's been, it's been a minute. Italian, well, okay, well, Mr. Mr. Nuage in Italian, what are you guys voting for? Are you voting for Baron Valley or Road Trip? Because I forgot the numbers. You have to pick one, Hydro. You have to pick one. Not not one, the number, but you have to select one of the options. Baron Valley, okay. So we have two Baron Valleys. We have essentially three Baron Valleys. Okay. Now, can each one of you write, if you're up to it, one sentence why you feel like this creates a feeling of a Baron Valley? Because if I, if I titled this song Family Road Trip... I think it might make you think of Family Road Trip. So can you go ahead and write in the chat briefly what makes you feel like no, 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 not Happy Road Trip, Family Road Trip, which may or may not be happy depending on how you get along with your family. Just saying. Takes all types to make a world. All right, while they type that, let's check out Dark Wasteland. I get it in
parallel major what? Sick. Not expecting that. Okay, so why I freaked out and why I had so much fun is quite simply because right here we had the change between parallel minor and parallel major. And oh my gosh, we've not heard that so much in this OST. We heard it so much in, oh, what was the murder mystery we did like three or four OSTs ago? In um and echo, um and echo, yes. Yes, thanks MFM. Yeah, exactly. We heard that parallel minor major switch all the time, all over, all over that OST. And we only heard it once or twice in the soundtrack and for it to pull out here, I was like 100% not expecting that. And so what that is, it's that the entire song is based in this feeling of, essentially we can think of this as being a, a melancholy or a thoughtfulness. Thoughtful. Now, ah, uh, not quite so thoughtful. Happy. Rejoicing. Celebrating. Thoughtful. And so it's changing one note, and the one note is the third. So we talked about the one, three, and five of the chords a little earlier today. And so it's all about the three. That's major. That's minor. So one and five stay the same, but three. That's three. Comes down. And just by changing one note in the chord, it goes from happy to sad, or happy to thoughtful and a little melancholy. And when composers choose to use both the same starting note and then also the major and the minor with that same starting note and its home bass for the whole key, ah, I just geek out for it and I love it so much. Okay, let's check out Special Cliffs. Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. Guys, I said special cliffs. And I'm listening to this piece of music, and I'm saying to myself, like, okay, the music sounds awesome, but I'm not understanding what is so special about these cliffs. And the entire time, so you just watch me sit there and listen to this, and understand that what I was saying to myself in my head was like, what is so special? about these cliffs. Guys, this song's called Spatial Cliffs. <laughs> so apparently, I'm feeling a little special right now. 
and I will do my best to read read from here on out. Spatial. Delightful song. So it starts off, you can't really tell what meter it's in, but then it drops into 12-8, which is wild. So in this first part here... It's maybe not immediately evident that that's where it's going to drop into. But you know, once the drums come in... So it almost plays a little trick on you. Okay, well at least I'm not alone. MF Mega Zero X and I are going to start a special club. We'll be over here. <laughs> In the special club, y'all are welcome to come join and be special too, because being special is nice. Okay, let's check out Dark Eyes Mountain. <laughs> well, this is fun. Keeping us on track, Andrew. Well, I will say this doesn't seem does indeed seem foreboding, threatening. Thank you very much to Hydru7 who is keeping us on track. While well, we're getting a little silly here. So thank you very much, Hydru. Yes, foreboding, threatening, and kind of slippery. Flat six for them one. Flat six. Five. Flat six. Five. Same exact relationship as from the time. Now we're in B flat.
So, really interesting chord progression. Now, all this is really cool, but there's something that happened at the beginning that was very original. So let's actually go back and check that out. Ah, E flat. F. And then to E minor. What an interesting intro because everything else was like, well, not 100% straight ahead, but very interesting intro there that I don't think we heard again throughout the rest of the piece. So we had Dark Ice Mountain, then we had Living Spirit, now we have something called Icicle Forest. Let's check out the Icicle Forest and hope you brought your protective helmet because my goodness, there's a forest of icicles. I assume they're falling a lot. Moy moy dangerous. Fragments of melody sound like it's super cool. Okay, so let's talk about what happened there because that was really cool. So we've seen a couple times that we have either chords or pattern descending chromatically. Not sure enough what we had happen here. In addition to throwing in some minor third relationships, like again, if you're playing Final Fantasy VII bingo, let's go. Or playing minor thirds bingo, let's go. We have a winner at some point. So it was walking down from A to A flat to G to G flat. Another way of saying it would be A, G sharp, G, F sharp. And then, excuse me, playing around <laughs> with minor thirds, <clears throat> excuse me, going back and forth. Really thinking about this pattern that we've caught on to in this OST of taking an idea and moving it down or up indeed by half steps, either down or up, and then by whole steps, either down or up. And we could see here that the tool being used was moving an idea down by half steps. So cool. Proud accomplishment.
So a beautiful track. One thing I want to point out here, which is really cool, is this first sort of riff idea here. So essentially what this is, we, then, we can think about this as being a C major triad. It makes a very pleasing movement. So what, what we're doing is we're keeping, and we can not think of this as a triad as well, we can think of this as just being a G and a C. And when it's this chord, it is indeed a C major triad in first inversion. But when we put this F here, we can, think, we can think about this being F, G, and C, and F, G, C would be an F sus 2. So we can also think about this as being an F sus 2 to an C, F sus 2, F sus 2 to C. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really holds a, a really calming space. And then when it changed, it went to D flat major, If I'm not incorrect, or maybe it was. Yeah, I think it was this. So it was E flat major to B flat major, first inversion. Now let's go back to the original. It's like so happy. It feels like you're getting towards the end of something, and it's good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Vast Ice Mountain. This reminds me a lot of Celeste. And there was always these levels that you were climbing up and climbing up and climbing up and the music was moving higher. It felt a lot like this. So this was the Vast Ice Mountain. Now we do have a Vast Ice Mountain peak and I'm very curious to actually go and listen to that peak and then compare this to the peak. Let's go listen to the peak and then compare and contrast. Ah, so faster already. Faster, yeah, yeah. A little bit more percussion. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, cool.
Yo, it's so Celeste right now. I got the violin and stuff. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between these two. And I think we may have a third in this series in the morning sun. So it may be the peak and then we're in the morning sun. I'm not sure. But, you know, this is slower. Slower. This is faster. This feels more celebratory. It really feels like we're getting towards a peak, whereas the vast ice mountain still felt like there was work to go. Let's see if in the morning sun is actually going to be the third in this trilogy to... Oh, maybe. Maybe not. By the way, the vote says we have two for two, saying yes, it does sound like Celeste. Yeah, complete cut, complete silence. So I'll talk through the chords this time. G, A, B minor, A, G, A, more A, B minor, A, G, F sharp minor, G, A, B, A, And then kind of go off base, but, uh, and then too at the end, it was doing the uh, same chord progression we actually just heard in Nice 8. We heard this in Nice 8 quite a bit. They would do the four, uh, flat 6, flat 7, 1, 5, flat 6, flat 7, 1. Very cool. 
Let's check out a whole new world. By the way, if you just heard a Discord sound, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was on my end. That was not you. Gorgeous. Wow, that that was beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. <sighs> Guys, we have four more songs. Let's listen to It's Not a Miracle. Thank you. 
Well, it's not a miracle sounded very sort of like a place where mir miracles could happen. I just said sort of, and then like, which was two steps back from saying something definite. But here's the thing. That did sound like a miracle. It sounded like, oh, wow, something great just happened. Perhaps you might agree. Perhaps you don't. Let me know in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, let me know in the chat. If you're watching this live on YouTube, let me know in the chat right now if you're watching live on Twitch. Thoughts for friends. Uh, maybe it's not a miracle because, like, we did it together. It was like, it's not a miracle because we came together and we made it happen. Because this sounds like it's not a miracle. Huh. Message on the wind. Same idea. I was on a miracle about the friends. A little faster. Just forget that main theme. That ba do ba do fee, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, bits of the, uh, the wiggly tufts.
Wow. What a beautiful way to bring this entire OST home. This last arc, if you will, from its not a miracle, thoughts or friends, the messages and went, and now here, yes, indeed, changing, but still, we had elements from it's not a miracle showing up in life goes on as well as themes, motifs that we've heard throughout this entire soundtrack showing up to wrap everything up so perfectly. Thank you so very much for joining me on this exploration. The first time I've ever done a Pokemon original soundtrack, and indeed the first time I've heard a Pokemon soundtrack probably since I was a teenager at the very latest. So this was really, really cool to be able to do, and I'm so very grateful for this time that we spent together on this journey and exploring this OST. I certainly learned a lot. I hope you did too, and I am so excited to see you for the next one. So with that being said, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much for hanging out, watching this, spending time here, and I will see you on the next stream. Oh, first time chatter. Acceleradiant says, thanks, Dan. This is one of my favorite OSTs. Well, Acceleradiant, thank you so very much for hanging out and listening. And thank you also for your first time chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's no problem at all to lurk. You're always welcome to lurk. Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed your time here, I kindly ask you to consider following. At the very least, follow. That way you'll know the next time we do something. If you really like this and you don't want to see ads anymore, subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, this channel, the work we do, you'll find there's a tab here on Twitch. You can also find the link on YouTube. It'll take you to my Streamlabs where you can donate and upvote and pick what OST I react to next as a way of supporting me and this channel and this reaction learning series. I know I call it a reaction because like that's that's the easy marketing thing to do is call it, but it's so much more than a reaction. I'm actually doing some teaching and breaking things down. So if you'd like to support this and keep this thing going, uh, please go ahead and give a donation and just pick whatever OST you want me to react to next and just put that in your donation. And there's a list of upcoming donations too. You can see that to make sure you're not double booking yourself there to make sure you're upvoting for something. But regardless, thank you all so very much for taking this time to hang out with me. And I will see you all in the next stream. That being said, take care and goodbye.